Welcome back, everybody, to the Archon Team League Championship. It's time for our second match of the day, Cloud9 versus Nihilum. If you're just joining us, you missed an absolute stomp of Tempo Storm. Value Town 6-2'd the entire series, and that ends up meaning that they're first place seed for ATLC. Not too much of a surprise. I think some people were predicting Value Town to potentially be the favorites of the tournament if they had to pick one, at least maybe in the fan favorite department, at least. Mm -hmm. This doesn't come as a surprise yeah. to us either, does it, Crip? Um... That's a little bit of a surprise. I, I didn't expect they would win. Does it noxious? Does it come as a surprise? That um, I, I had my bets hedged on Team Liquid initially, but hey, I was wrong. So far. Sorry, Grab. I was just I was just having fun. <laughs> That's right. I, I wanted someone him. to agree with me, but it's, it's cool. uh, I didn't want to. Always got it. it, it it's cool, man. So go ahead, drop drop the knowledge. What what was surprising about their performance uh, this season for you? Um, I mean, yeah. Someone, someone had to win. Um, they, they were doing really well uh, at the start. Uh, I think they had, um, they had a really good opener, if I remember correctly, in the first few weeks, and they kind of stumbled a little bit midway, um, which is kind of like the similar run that Nylum has had. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it's kind of hard to see it that way. They did have Kibler, who was also always doing decisively well. Um, overall, I guess it's not too surprising that they made it all the way through. Um, but, uh, that last matchup against Tempo Storm was, uh, a bit of a surprise to me. I, I never thought I would, I would live to the day where we'd see three benched stamps. Yeah, the, it was the last the chance you had was basically this week, right? And yeah. it happened. What do you think would happen first? You complete your golden collection through dusting it all at one time, or seeing <laughs> three members on a team benched in ATLC? Um... I don't know. Just depends how much money I want to give Blizzard through packs, I guess, right? <laughs> That's yeah. Right. Yeah, but it, it, probably my goal is a little bit less likely. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, the release card is too only, fast. Only for the, the most hardcore for the crew. Mm. Yeah. All right, well, we are going to see Cloud9 versus Nihilum here. Um, Nihilum, uh, again, they kind of stumbled uh, a little bit. I think they actually stumbled a little bit last week. Um, if I remember correctly, they had to replace Life Coach for Lothar, and yeah, overall things, yeah, things just didn't work out too too well for them. But um, going into last week, Nylum was, uh, I think, decisively at the top of the scoreboard. So now they're in a tied position with the other uh, at the start of today, other three teams. Now we know that uh, Valley Town is ahead. Um, so this match will essentially dictate who the second team to advance will be. The match differential will uh, dictate which team gets placed first uh, versus second. But after the brutal slaying of Tempo Storm, which we just witnessed, um, the team to win here <laughs> is going to have to win even more decisively than that uh, to mm -hmm. take uh, the spot over Value Town. That's going to be really rough, and I'd like to point out something that I'm pretty sure Frodan noticed as well since uh, we talked about it last time we were casting together, is Druids are being played by Colento and RDU, and that class is not exactly known for its good performance in ATLC so far. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've got to be... I'm really curious what the reasoning is behind bringing the class. Uh, like, you don't see Hunter on the Nihilum side, for instance. It's not a good class, though. Hunter? <laughs> 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 oh, who are we kidding? Face. I think you're yeah. missing a Lenny face after that that statement. Grab yeah, but uh, we have seen a decent amount of Druid. Uh, it hasn't been particularly good. Uh, we actually mentioned, I think, last week how uh, the only player that had a positive win rate with Druid in the tournament was Thice, and now mm -hmm. we actually see Thice pass Druid along to RDU, which is a little bit of uh, a strange occurrence. Uh, though with yep. Druid, um, it's been a very popular class that teams have opened up with. I think Grim Patient Warrior and Druid, um, just off of random thoughts from what I've seen so far, uh, maybe it's not statistically accurate, but it seems those two decks have led the charge uh, more times than not, from, from my memory at least. Yeah, it's the same adage as people used to follow, the fact that Druid is capable of beating a lot of decks, it doesn't have... Too many god awful matchups. There's a few of them that exist that we've seen. For example, the Mech Shaman is one really bad one. Or uh, I was actually messaged by Hype that it was a Mech Mage that uh, was in the previous series. Unfortunately, didn't get to play it. 
So those are the matchups that Druid would be afraid of. But outside of that, even Patron Warrior, something that people thought was bad for the Druid, it's not so it's not so poor actually. Now that you know how to play against it, people tech in the weapon hate, and Druid still has a lot of capability of pressuring. So I would like a Druid opener out of Nylon. But they also have brought Life Coach's Patron Warrior um, to the front. And that'd be an interesting dynamic if both teams, once again, decide to try to jump the patrons and as a result mm -hmm. bring a weird matchup because they're both trying to ambush each other. Yeah. What do you think mm -hmm. the reasoning is for not bringing Hunter at all um, from Nihilum? Like, what's the, Drew's the way idea? Better. <laughs> okay, so now that that's out of the way, um, what about Druid is better? Do they have a better beast archetype? Is that it? Oh, they will. Maybe in DGD, yeah. Savage <laughs> combatant. Yeah. The Darnassus um, assailant. That's what I'm doing, actually. I think it's a Darnassus. Darnassus aspirant. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh man. Yeah, you need to That's play more doing. well, man. Yeah. I'm gonna do flashcards. It's like I'm studying for the SATs. <laughs> <laughs> During you're casting, probably, I mean, you're just gonna have to cast like Crips Arena trades. runs. You'll be good to go. That's right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it is very weird that we don't see Hunter. Um, I feel like I've seen this from a team lineup before in ATLC. Um, but from what I remember, that team did not win that week. So maybe there's some correlation. Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to have to ask uh, RDU eventually uh, how the name of their team is pronounced. Because I say Nihilum since it's from Latin, but I, everybody else says Nihilum, something else. I think. Yeah. I'll have to look yeah. into it because I, I get the feeling it's. Uh, it's from Latin, like the Latin Nihilum, but I keep uh, getting messed up every time. Anyway, first game, Mage versus Rogue. So, what do you think Strivecrow is going to be taking here, honestly? Like, I think what he's type of mage? His mage most of the weeks. I think he brought like a grinder mage on like week three or four, and uh, it really failed to produce uh, much in the way of results. So, I think he's got back to freeze mage after that. And overall, I think uh, Strife Chris Freeze Mage has had an acceptable performance in the tournament. I would assume so. I think Freeze Mage has had a pretty decent win rate in the ATLC. We, did, we do know for sure that Druids had the worst win rate in ATLC, uh, clocking in at sub 40%, which is n not really unexpected, <laughs> but at the same time... Right. Pretty bad. It's like no other deck is in that range. Everything else is at least you know mid forties and above. Yeah, Even but if easy. both if both teams bring the druid, then I think it comes down to whoever wins first with their druid and gets it out of the way. Sure, sure. Because um, then it's eaten up all the wins that a druid can possibly get, right? At the same time, I think uh, didn't Hunter have the highest win rate? In, yeah, uh, like sixty yes, percent. It like maybe a little under sixty or sixty, like about sixty percent so far. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. It's a good class. Yeah, Rogue, Rogue is above 50% win rate. As much as people like to question Rogue choice, it's been pretty decent. Although, it is a much smaller sample size for classes like Druid and Priest compared to like Hunter, which has been played a lot. Uh, Warrior, which has been played pretty much every series, right? I, I think I'd be surprised if there was one series that didn't have Warrior, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I think you're right. Whoa! Yeah, looks like a furry version. Oh. Looks like a mech mage from Strive Crow right here. Not exactly what I expected, but hey. That's um, not even what I expect from mech mage. I don't think I've, I don't even know if I've ever seen Fell Reaver and mech mage outside of like that one time I played against this mech mage at rank 18. Like, <laughs> well, it migrated. So. It migrated from the mech shaman into right. the mech mage. That's what happened. Mm. It started okay. getting to the point where um, you just you you don't want to play secrets sometimes. It's a little clunky and. You might you ditch Mad Scientist, you ditch the uh, what's it called the Mirror the Entity, yeah. and then you just have big tempo plays like the Fell Reaver, and it turns out you kill him just as fast, if not faster. And mm -hmm. we've seen this deck be popularized in China about three weeks ago, and th then we started seeing some players stream it. I think um, Raynad and Eloise are streaming because I think Eloise's former teammate. That's how we introduced it within the team. Uh, her former teammate is the one who took it to number one. And then Shrive Coast got it from Nims, and Shrive Coast started practicing with it. So, this is cool. It's Whoa. very, very powerful, Crim. Okay. Um, well, Shrive Crow is agonizing over uh, the Cogmaster versus the Manorm. 
the Cogmaster leads into a follow-up with the Anoyatron, which would normally punish a deadly poison play. But uh, against Backstab, this is the, the weaker play. So Strifegrid took a bit of a gamble and uh, he lost. He's still got a really good curve either way, because you go Anoyatron into turn 3 Mana Worm Unstable. Which, just for that reason, I think the play was better. Because your turn 3 is also secured by your hand. Sure. So. Well... I don't, I don't know, like, the, the Anoyatron doesn't really apply that much pressure, and you could just play it anyway. It's, I think it's the fact that um, it, it kind of warrants a response, so like, he's gonna have to hero power and hit that thing down if he just, mm -hmm. like, and now he has the Mana Worm protected from, like, deadly poison if it gets, um, you know, it, it would need, like, backstab SI7 agent in order to clear it. So, I, I think it's, it's okay. Okay. Those chuggers are pretty good draw, too. Keep the rogue weapon frozen for a while. Mm, yeah, what do you think uh, RDU's reaction is going to be to that? Because you kind of have to answer it as soon as you can. It's a pretty big threat. There's a really good, there, there's a really good like, array of plays that can be made uh, from RDU just because of that Vod teacher and the prep and Eviscerate. Like, the amount of plays that he has here are pretty crazy. Assuming he just doesn't want to go for uh, He can do a ESL. prep prep eviscerate on the two three and SI into the taunt creature. Yeah. But do you prefer to play Violet Teacher instead and spawn like two one ones? That's true. Coin Violet Teacher and Prep Eviscerate on the two three. Mm. It seems better because you get the one ones out and that helps you fight so that way yeah. Blade Flurry is more effective or if you pick a fan of knives. Everything is better with a with a bunch of one ones, right? Right, and then the the, the challenge on the other end is um, if the Vibe Teacher was just out there with no one ones and Fireball would be fantastic. As such, Fireball is still really good here. Yeah, but the thing is, if this play gets punished, you're just kind of out of it. Yeah, and you've kind of lost the game. This play is going to get punished. <laughs> Unfortunately, this, is, this has already been like a very right. punishing game for both players. Unstable portal though. I mean, that's you never really truly count someone out until all the cards have been played, especially with a mage that has yeah. unstable. And then I you're going to see a new deck with unstable portal spell slinger that's heavily competitive, and that's going to be the end of competitive Hearthstone as we know it. Interesting. Oh, I'm pretty sure uh, that's that's almost exactly going to happen. We'll see. We'll see. I I know firsthand, man. You weren't there, were you? When I got when the person got Everyone flame strike off it. of spell slinger. Yeah. No one saw that. <laughs> Nobody saw right. that. Everyone saw it. It's in like troll highlights now. Yep. Your star, Fred, and your star. Thank you. Not, not the star you want to be, but your right. star nonetheless. Well, this is probably just a, a weak sauce blade flurry play. <laughs> It's not that weak what are you sauce. About? It's the fine, right? for two mana. Yeah, dude, and you keep the the card draw from Blood Mage. It's sick. Yeah. Trip's yeah, not convinced for that. You have high standards nowadays. Yeah. You no, no, it's, 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 it's obviously the play. It's just um, it doesn't feel good, man. Like if you're playing a deck with so much weapon pump, and you got a blade flurry for two. Oh man. It's not even like a baseline two. It's not really the Blood Mage Thanos two. It's not an Auto Barber two, right? It's just sure, exactly. Sure. Blood Mage enabling it. Yeah, I could see that. But so, what does he want out of that Unstable Portal Tinker Town Technician? I guess. I don't know if he's playing. Or do you just go pinging? Like you just go ahead and ping because your turn six will be uh, Mech Unstable ping, or the other way around. Maybe the well, Blast Mage would be really good because he has Mechs in hand, and then Blast mm. Mage would be. Yeah, playable with a mech warper. It would be one Next actually. Would be one. Well, oh right, right, right. Because they fell reaver would also be playable with the mech warper. Ha! Huh, yeah, that's that'd right. be hell. Well, well, he's definitely not going for unstable because he would have played first. So. Right, right. This this play I think just leads into the ping because you don't want to do a mech warper either. Now, one thing that's Oh, that's surprising. Well, he doesn't want to get the spell power, so if he had Fan of Knives or something, but I think you want your opponent to f force himself into the draw. Exactly. Well, Backstab trade, yeah, sure. I, uh, I, I absolutely... Wow, Van Cleef, look at that. I absolutely prefer to kill the uh, 
the minion doesn't draw a card when uh, the options are fairly limited once your yeah. hand size is so low. That's exactly what's going to happen. RDU initiates the trade. And, and RDU. Wow. Mm. Mm. Look at wow. That. He's got the oil. Unstable that Linktron, ladies and gents. Unstable it. No, unstable the Harrison, Harrison Jones. Jones. Screw the Harrison's Linktron. Probably more devastating. Well, Linktron's cooler. Let's do it. Oh, wait, well. I, 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 I agree. I agree. Linktron is cooler. <laughs> Linktron is pretty cool, especially because if you give him Light's Justice and you have something really no, advanced. No, that's just like fine. You can oil it up. Oh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Can... Oh, it's <laughs> even better Assassin's Blade. Yeah, this will get the cold oh, mind, by the way. Um, you guys like to oil up. I just want to point it out. You have uh, messed up really badly. So, non is still going to wait until he's completely out of options, and I can't fold him. Is it me or the uh, spectator mode is uh, showing that a lot of options can be used, it can't be used, and it's been doing that at, uh, yeah, like throughout the matches. Yeah, like if you're usable, but it's, it's not exactly. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty maybe easy it's just to tell. The, Maybe it's just Blizzard raising the skill cap. They don't <laughs> highlight the arms. They highlight everything. <laughs> oh, wow. The the caster high the the caster. Uh, it's my favorite meme nowadays. They're just like make everything orange highlighted. It's cool. Well, yeah. we're at a pretty interesting stage in the game where all of RDU's options are pretty horrible. Um, he's still like doing fine in terms of the game overall, but there's a real opportunity for him to get completely tempoed out of this game. So it looks like he's just going to play uh, just the tempo four four on the cleef and just get that SI on the board. Yeah, I don't think he's in that bad of a spot. You know, one fireball is out of the way. One of those cards is a spare part. So usually he's going to be fine, especially since he's sprinting next turn. It's very unlikely the mage has any card draw that's going to compete with that. Um, but we'll have to see. Exactly right. I mean, if if he does have to sprint for full mana and he doesn't really do anything with the board, he's just going to be behind a lot. Like, uh, Striker has the the tempo freeze here on the Van Cleef. If he gets a good outcome from his portal and RDU uh, blanks out on his sprint, I think the tempo might just be too much from the mage. Oh, Holy cow! That's interesting. That's a big minion. I mean, it's the fact that Rogue has trouble dealing with big minions. It's not even necessarily the battle cry because there's only a few damage points, but look at the threat that it's going to be following up with. Not to mention that even if RDU drew sap or some way to return it, then Striker would just replay it for normal mana so you don't even regain, or you don't even lose too much. Yeah, um, yeah so but it's, it's really so clunky. Like, it's actually, it's a really powerful card, but it's in a really bad spot. He can't play it this turn, and he Striker really just wanted something that he could play this turn. But it's still okay, I think, ultimately, because the Frostbolt ping lives with the 4 1, and if the Rogue face tanks it, um, that's like the worst that could happen, because then you kind of waste some damage on Alex. But you're still ahead uh, by a get pretty it. big brick shot. It's true, but I, I think your win condition was just uh, to tempo out the Rogue in the spot, and he's not going to be able to do that. Well, if you tempo her out, though. Tempo. You you kind of like if you if you opt for the emergency coolant and the frostbolt and you attack for four you effectively waste the damage that Alex would have done like you're kind of doing the same damage twice. Mm -hmm. You know what would have been better than Alex Straza? Mm -hmm. North Sea Kraken. <laughs> what if they had messed it up and Unstable Boom. Portal could actually spawn TGT cards? That'd be cool. Be That'd cool. be insane. Am I am I right or wrong? Huh? Um, I think I'd, I think I'd prefer uh, Alistraza over the North Sea Kraken though. But Frodan likes the, the animation. I oh, guess the if animation you get sapped, is sick. The North sick. Sea Kraken is, is it's like really water good. gun. Oh my god! Whoa, 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 whoa! That's a good top deck. Hardy is like, well, I guess I can kill that now. Yeah. I was losing. Can... Now I'm not losing. Well, he could. He... You but look how much damage that is. Now it's... No, I think I think you actually oh, just oh, do you do you take the loss to fireball? Do you play like Lotheb and go face with the the weapon here? How much damage is it next turn with deadly poison, deadly poison, oil, and blade flurry? That's an that's... insane amount of damage. Yeah, so the weapon will be eight, so that's sixteen. Um... The opponent will be at twenty-four. You'll have the Lotheb. Plus I mean, you could still win the tempo damage. game, right? If you decide to kill Alex, you still win the tempo game. 
So is there even a reason to, to not kill her? Because I get it, right? Like, it, it's fancier to try to just wait for that crazy yeah, burst. But if it doesn't pan out, um, then you yeah. just basically lose on the back of that. I think uh, RDU couldn't really spot a legitimate two-turn lethal, so... Yeah. He opted to go for this. Oh! Oh boy! Mech time! Oh, that could be insane. And the tempo is still Last on the major side, funny enough. Yeah. That Anogatron is changing things quite a bit. Oh! Nice job! Nice job, Blast well done. Mage! Well done. Who needs that coolant when you can just Oof. blast mage? <laughs> oh, that, that coolant is gonna... Oh, wow! Heal by. <laughs> oh, but still, you see, this is the exact same thing as we spoke of earlier. Do you play around Fireball? In this case, since you know what that card is, which is a spare part, you don't. Yeah, you know it's a spare um, part. Unless the spare part can generate Fireballs through Antonitis, that's not really of a threat. Oh, no, it's... <laughs> <laughs> oh... Yeah. You could sap and just play low step heal bot next turn. Sap what? The five Blast four. Mage? Yeah. Yeah, but it just does four damage when he replays it, and most most likely Strike will be able to play that as well as the draw. So it really does nothing. It yeah, it doesn't protect it, against Frostbolt either. But so the question is, do you like four split among two targets, or do you like five to your face? Because that's exactly where that damage is going. Funny thing is, if his opponent had the rewind, anyways. Oh my god! Like, what if he gave him lethal based off of that sap? <laughs> like, he yeah. attacks the face, you know, returns it, and then does it again. Be really yeah. Cool. Oh man, this is a nightmare for RDU. It's uh, it's still one that will continue though. Yeah, he's got <laughs> antique heal bot. So, that's a pretty okay. sick card in this okay. case. Okay. Unreal. I like it. Yeah. Pretty sure RDU likes it too. It's a pretty good top deck in this situation. I think you have to throw the sap on the 5-4 now though. Yeah, it's, it's actually much less effective uh, unless his opponent trades onto the board. But... If then you're kind of happy, does, I guess? Well, if he does, then he's not doing damage to your face. Yeah. That prep was really clutch. It didn't get, like, he wasn't dead on board, but there's always a chance, and that, from RDU's perspective, is what could seal the game. Unless he plays super greedy. Yeah. Hey. For, he's at the Frost Bowl, I guess. Super greedy. <laughs> he's like, you know what, I don't even need to go through that Divine Shield. Oh, yeah, if you sat the Neutron, you can kill, kill the, the 2-1, yeah. Yeah, and then he won't be able to play his spare part, most likely, so... Uh, that's a pretty legitimate play, but it still makes you pretty weak to stuff. Ooh, the greedy play. Alright. What is he looking for? He's looking for the stealth part, Time right? rewinder, so he can replay yeah, the He's looking for freeze, I think. Because freeze just stops him from dying, basically. With, like, anything. Oh, right, right, right. Also because it's low theft, so he couldn't replace. He could still mm -hmm. get another spare part if he wants it while killing the uh, the heal bot. The thing is, if he does that, then he loses two minutes to it, and then only has the opportunity to play one spare part for six, which is it's pretty cool. It's also nice to just go for face here because you open up lethal with just another frost bolt. Yeah, and you know everything you have is gonna die, so you're gonna see that pair of spare part from the clockwork. Oh, well, either you're dead or your board's dead. Pick one. I think you are dead, aren't you? With the uh, sap. Oil. Sap plus prep oil, damage. I think. He's plus, like plus the... six. So he's got 12 plus six. Okay. We got two of his trades, though, right? He's just one off. He's one off, right? Oh, he might have the one of his trade left because he used one earlier. Oh. I believe he is one damage off lethal here. Actually, oh. maybe not. Maybe he's got it with the double oil. But what if no, it hits the Drake? No, no, no. no, it's it's yeah, it's it's bad if it uh, hits the new Drake. But I think it's okay otherwise. Okay, so oh, he's gonna go for the trading play. Okay, you know I like that. It's actually super safe. But that means there's like three outs in Strike Pro's deck left, right? Well, two. He's used up one Frost Bolt. So. Oh man. Did he? Did he have?
way you could win, but there's no way. This is Treasure. where you spell sling and get the lethal. Actually, spell slinger to get a few points of damage is pretty reasonable. You could even like spell slinger a polymorph boar. Huffer face. Ooh. <laughs> oh, the big I place. I like it. I like that play. Polymorph boar hmm. on the spell sling. That's pretty awesome. I think spell oh, well, sling this, might, this might is see it. play in the, in the mech mage. Or just in a tempo based mage deck. Yeah, I think so too. You play it with uh, Lord Walker Cho to get the spell back, and mm -hmm. uh, with Lothab, of course, to deny the, the spell use. Okay, yeah, Striper concedes. Um, he actually took quite some time there. Uh, there's definitely nothing he could do, and his opponent had uh, lethal on the board. So Nylum gets first blood. There we go. RDU out of the gate, uh, taking the win with Rogue. Uh, Rogue's been a pretty popular opener today, at least. Um, yeah, with Dog. Worked for RDU, did not work for Dog. Uh, I'm a little confused, though, because I think the graphics show that RDU was playing Mage and Druid, but he ended up bringing out the Rogue, so I think uh, we're going to have to correct oh, that. Oh, okay. Well, that, that probably makes some sense. But that, that's why I, I was a little bit confused, too, because Thice has almost always been the uh, the Druid player, right? right? And he's also a fantastic Freeze Mage player, too, so I think the Druid and Mage belong to Thice, and RDU is the Paladin and the Rogue. Yeah, he has been the Paladin, I think, and maybe the, even yeah. every week, actually. Right, and he's also played Rogue a lot too. It's his, I think it's his favorite class. That and Hunter are his two mm -hmm. favorites. Yeah, life coach is playing Warlock and you know Warrior. Surprise. Again. Uh, I wonder when we'll see him switch to something else because maybe a deck will come up eventually that he'll just stick to that isn't actually restricted to those two classes. But so far, they seem to fit his playstyle very nicely. So. Yeah, it's I mean, why? Point. Why mix it up if your team has been number one or tied for number one through the entire season? <laughs> right, right. Without think, an analyst. Um, I think Crip brought up a really good point that there's some there's some teams that are rather predictable, but they're very strong. Um, and then you have teams that can bring almost anything and mix it up all the time. Um, and I think these are two teams that actually represent that, right? Kalento, Strife Crow, Ecop, they're very versatile players. Uh, and it's not that Ny Nylum isn't very flexible, it's the fact that they prefer to stick with these decks because they're so good at them. It's why mm -hmm. they like you know, making it iconic to them. So it's, it's pretty cool. I think it's a little bit of old school and new school. New school Hearthstone players are ones that can play literally anything and they have to be very dynamic because of the way Conquest is. But back in the day, you know, Hearthstone, people used to really favor one kind of deck and they'd be bringing it all the time. Uh, so I, I like this clash of style. Yeah, it's certainly quite interesting. Now, what can we expect um, in the next game here? Could Basically, Ecop pull out the Hunter? I wouldn't be surprised to see Ecop. Number one, I guess you want Strike out of the way. You don't want to bench him this early. Uh, although some people have done the exact opposite and just kill the same person twice but i would oh i expected the hunter from ecop but i guess warlock's got a generally good matchup against everything either way it really depends on the archetype that he's got how good or bad is this for thighs though druid against warlock we're gonna look at this from the druid perspective because that's the class that i think has to find the good matchup as opposed to the warlock which can probably smash itself into the a random pit of classes and come out on average ahead Mm -hmm. Sure. It'll depend well, on the Tice, arc. Uh, absolutely has had uh, some great success with Druid. Uh, we're talking about how Druid has. I didn't. I didn't actually know that it had the worst win rate in the tournament. I thought it was just one of the worst, but uh, confirmed by Frodan. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we also learned that last week uh, Tice was sporting a positive win rate with the Druid, and he may have been the only player with that. He's a true master of duels, as far as I'm concerned. Mm hmm. Having the highest win rate with the worst class. I think it's the worst performing class. Yeah. So here we see Thais um, masterfully getting the Innervate, but not, unfortunately for him, finding the Wild Growth. So that's a bit of an issue. The Zuhan isn't looking too quick, at least. That's not going to punish Thais too much. Yeah. yeah. You know, Ecop had Egg and Defender and a few other options, but he opted to go just quicker and ends up semi getting punished for it because uh, he doesn't really have a good curve at all. Until maybe, no, he doesn't have a good curve at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's no point at which this curve suddenly becomes good unless you top deck a two drop. 
Yeah, I was thinking that maybe he gets two drop and then he has implosion plays, but I was thinking that Druid doesn't have anything to do, so. Yeah, what are you going to implode? Instead. Usually you can implode your egg, but that's mm -hmm. usually a very risky play because then swipe. Yeah. Well, Ty certainly thought about it. He wanted to attack the 1 3, but uh, chose not to in the end. Uh, there's certainly some uh, argument <laughs> to attack. If you can, uh, maybe force of nature, if you're required to, maybe on turn four, if you have a really good fit one. But um, probably thinks there's going to be a better opportunity for force of nature. And in that case, you don't really want to uh, take an additional damage. Yeah, that so one damage up, does uh, end up mattering a lot. Hiccup's going to start playing, I guess, on turn seven. Well, he's got this. Yeah. He's going to... He's gonna slam like, Dugard with a coin on turn four. What are you talking about? Yeah, l l lose that, lose all that Doctor Boom value. <laughs> yeah. uh, discard two Boom bots. No, never. The night. What's funny is that this hand becomes really good if he just picks a Void Caller because Void Caller and you right. low fed and coin Boom and then, yeah. oh my gosh, Drew just dies. That type of thing. Um, no, I, I think this might be a game where just the Warlock's going to die from like 30 health because we're going to have two shades that are going to grow. The Warlock does. The Warlock has no cards that, that kills these shades out of stealth. Mm -hmm. None. And Absolutely none. So uh, Ecop basically can't tap. I don't even know if he can play the Flame Imp when he's looking at that board because he basically has to race down Tice. <laughs> I think yeah. you severely underestimate the power of Knife Juggler and Implosions, Crip. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I've, I've been on the receiving end a few times of a knife juggler just juggling four times on my shit. Oh, man. Yeah, Frodo, I think this you? is a good place for you to voice your experience. Uh, we're here to listen to you. <laughs> Tell us about I've your had trauma my fair with the share. zoo. Yeah, and, you know, oh. at that point, I'm really glad the concede button works instantly because now I know. Yeah, it right. actually works instantly now, right? I can, I can lose even faster. It's good. I actually think there's some argument to implosion your own egg here. I think it's great. Force of swipe. I think it's better than power overwhelm on your own egg. Well, you definitely want a Lotheb coin boot. Right? That's the... No. No, no, no. I think, I think you actually don't want to play Lotheb because with double shade, the only way you're going to lose is turn nine. It's just going to totally destroy you regardless of what you're playing. That's and still, that's so far out. Though. No, no, I think you're both talking about different plays. Uh, you're both advocating for the implosion of your own egg. Mm -hmm. And from what I was saying, you want to go turn six, uh, turn five Lotheb, turn six Dr. Boom. So but you were both yeah, kind of agreeing. Look at the situation right now. If if it hits turn seven, Ecop, Ecop might just die. Yeah, yeah, that is a possibility. <laughs> um, yeah, it's turn uh, seven. The shades will be. Well, hold on. He has to get through the Void Walker first, right? So Ty should actually hero power this one three. Yeah, that's that's my consideration. Right. That now. If he does, if he doesn't do it, but if he does it, it's gonna like it's gonna give his opponent a, somewhat of a tell, I guess. Well, n um, next turn he might do like a wrath for one, and then hero power into the void caller again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the shade will be a six six and a five five, so that's eleven plus the thirteen dam or plus the fourteen four yeah. fourteen damage mm -hmm. uh, plus the four. So it's GG, yeah. So that's twenty nine damage. <laughs> <laughs> yep, called it. Game. Well, not, I mean, Defender of Argus can just ruin everything, but... Yeah, he has to find You're right first. for now. For next two turns, it seems like there's nothing. Tight mm. just passes. And Ika picks up the not Defender of Argus. Oh, there is another um, possibility if Ika senses this and then... Void like, Caller. Yeah, Void Caller and then Malganus pops out. Now, Ekop's thinking of racing. Uh, I actually mm. think he will lose the race. If I'm not mistaken, uh, he's gonna be taking yeah. Unless another power bombing stop deck with like uh, uh, life tap abusive, I think he's losing the race. Unless the egg comes in to help, but that would have to be done like. Oh, that is oh really really bad. Power bombing race. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's still. Uh... As I said, he could he could have done he could do it next turn, but now that the PO is gone, it's looking a little grim. Oh, oh my whoa. god, what on earth? Take yes. the Doom Guard. Take yes. it. Take oh, the Doom so Guard. Beautiful. Wrath the one three kill Lothar. Trip. What what is your um okay. like I like to watch people Even be miserable factor at right oh. now? Oh he's 
you baited me so hard. Oh, you saw something in the middle move, right? And then you were like, oh, that's that, that's got to be the Doom Guard. Yeah. You were wrong. Yeah, but like ne next turn, it's over. Like, it, now, even if you get Argus, can you even stay alive? That's the question. What? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. By the way, uh, Lothar is confirming that it is Nihilum. So. Oh, is it Nihilum? I had to ask him. He knows better than I do. I, mean, I thought Lothar also confirmed that this game is over next turn. Yeah, I, I think uh, <laughs> Crip confirmed that like on turn two. Crip was like, "Oh, this is over already. Double shade." <laughs> uh, that was magnificent. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, he's got so many minions on board. He's not anticipating a shadow flame, but I don't see a reason to feel like he needs to attack either. Okay. Either way, rather inconsequential. In the oh, oh. There it is! Are Maybe you too late? Enough. Is it? Is it? Uh, yeah. You can sound the shade, owl. I guess. Yeah, with the, with the yes. owl, because uh, the shades came out, maybe it's maybe it's good enough. No, I don't think so. Um, like, with four minions on the board, mm. you're going to have three left over, right? And three little trees. It's optimistic. So if yeah, he kills over. off Lotheb, uh, that's going to have three health remaining on a taunt. And then three health remaining. On the egg. Yeah, you're not thinking enough of that. Yeah, it's but enough the, still. It's enough still. Okay. For sure. Uh, the, the other minion, the other shade, I think, takes the lethal. Yeah, it, it'll actually be enough by like <laughs> six or seven damage or kill. <laughs> like, I like how Ecop really suspects there's some really nasty stuff coming. Yeah, so he knows what's coming based yeah. off the way everything's happened. It's like, but it's like he didn't seven. play anything for like five turns and now the shade stayed stealth right oh okay goodbye well, nice knowing you yeah yeah i mean either way there seemed to be multiple damage overkill and that you can even hear a power on top yeah oh yeah he's the top deck uh in the the there. yeah oh man i hope he got solid that's brutal brutal it is so brutal um, it, it's a good point that uh, he can hero power as well, because say he was like a little damage under, that would have mm -hmm. helped get past the three. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, the three health doom guard we spoke of a little earlier. Well, there you man, go. That, that MC tech, I mean, it made the difference really. Um, it, I right. thought I thought he'd win anyway, just because uh, Ecop. I don't think he could afford to tap. Uh, the shades just getting really insane. He knew he didn't have an answer. Um, so he really had to just draw into Argus. He did draw into Argus, but he lost the big health body because of the MC tech, right? Yeah. So that was not enough to, like, it wouldn't have been enough to keep him alive. And the worst part is, because of the Lotheb, you then have to trade into it with your Doom Guard, weakening your taunt line even further. So yeah. it's like, uh, yeah, double whammy there for, for Thais. Well, that's, you know, Thais is really, it's kind of weird how everybody fails at winning with Druid. In this league so far, except Thais. Mm -hmm. I don't understand this. MC like, his tech, win rate tech. with Druid is like 70%, I think. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, it's pretty good stuff. Uh, I think, uh, you know, these days, people see Thais as a pretty good Druid player, one of the best. But uh, he's he's been in that seat for... A while. I think yeah. forever. I think he actually right. like had his like big tournament debuts... Uh, on the back of uh, extremely good Druid performances, like, a year ago, <laughs> plus. So, uh, yeah, he's still at it. That's right. Nice shout-out oh. there by Nemox7, by the way, yeah. um, saying that Nilum's pretty bold for not bringing Hunter. They're the first team to do so. Mm -hmm. And I would have... I mean, if there's two classes that I would have predicted all the way through ATLC, it would have been Hunter and Warrior. Right. And Warrior does end up making the cut, but not the Hunter. Very fascinated by this. And I feel like it has to, again, go based off of style. I think Tice is like, I want to play Druid. I want to play Freeze Mage. Life Coach is like, I, you know, I want to play Warrior or Patient Warrior. And <laughs> right. I want to play Handlock. So, RDU, you can play whatever you want. And I think this week, RDU was feeling the Paladin in the Rogue. Because what he's, if, what if he's the one bringing Hunter, usually. Yeah. 
what if it's a different form of style? They're like, yeah, we lost last week, but we're the best, so we got to prove it. We'll just drop Hunter from our league and, and beat up. Oh, on that sick. Anyway. I say, like, why stop there? It's like, yeah. which brings <laughs> Priest and Shaman. Yeah, <laughs> and Mixie Paladin, Druid, Rogue. And it's going to be like the, the, yeah. back, like the backspace Rogue, of course. You're going to have like all the style six things. Priest lists. That's what they do. Yeah, and then they get everything eliminated except that one list that has to win six times. <laughs> oh, man. The funny thing is, if you could actually bring six priests, you would probably be favored. I think it's actually a strength to be able to bring the same type of deck more than once. If you if you brought six, like, Death Lord anti-aggro priests, I don't think you would ever lose. Right, because you Yeah, you're right. Oh, what if the the opponents always like they always bring an equality paladin, right? Well, they'd have to bring or, six equality paladins. I guess. Yeah. Um, I guess you can make the argument for almost any deck. If you bring six of one deck, the deck will be good at least against one specific type of deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, yeah. I, I think at six, you're kind of breaking so, the, the whole. Six patron warriors, right? So, oh man, that's hell. Welcome <laughs> to hell. <laughs> you should be able to do that. That's everyone get in here, like you know. Oh, cool! If you got the next challenge rate. stone thing, you have like three of the same deck. Like, that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> How's that sound? Bring three decks of the same kind of deck. Yeah. The fake Highlander. All right. Well, uh, Ecop uh, gonna try again here. Uh, he has the the chance to get benched. Um, often we've seen teams just intentionally play out the player that can be benched. Uh, just because it's it's less likely that he uh, would be coming out and may otherwise get a, a pretty nice matchup. Yeah. And uh, maybe that is the case, Hunter versus Warlock. Uh, just the classes on their own uh, often does favor the Hunter. Yeah, you don't get the Moltens early. Usually it's a pretty rough ride. And I don't know if Life Coach will be expecting such an aggressive start from ECOP. Like, such an aggressive deck. Based on what we're looking at here, it could just be a full-on aggro. Mm-hmm. He um, might, though. I feel like Hybrid Hunter is really starting to grow a lot in pop popularity. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's fast enough to pressure the patrons. It's slow enough to help you handle aggro sometimes while being able to race them. It just it just hits the right pocket of the metagame right now. Um, and I think it's definitely better than Face Hunter at dealing with Handlock. Uh, you have you still have those high mains. You still have the ability to drop threats and hold on to damage as opposed to the aggressive face hunter you have to always be pushing damage every single turn otherwise you don't have enough to, to end the game yeah you throw it in and you hope it sticks where like you deal one damage once whereas the high main has like recurring damage potential right yes on a completely different topic i go i have to say i think i think life coach is in extremely good form he's looking like a mad professor right now of hearthstone like yeah, perfectly show them all to that frame, you know. Yeah. He's, he's on point <laughs> right now. Right. I feel like they squeeze his webcam a little bit because it's it's looking a little caricature like, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's it's, it's very drawn out. It looks like someone's holding. There's a there's an invisible hand holding Life Coach by the top of the hair, and he's just kind of dragging down. That reminds me of uh, Super Smash Brothers '64. <laughs> yeah, the master. Oh man. All right. Well, um, you of is mad scientist. Cards, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, mad scientist. You just kind of separate. You just part life coaches hair to the side. <laughs> oh, that, that's what it was all along. <laughs> oh my God, life coach's hand is so like much better than it was a second seed. ago. Is it? It's gonna I thought it was game. hopeless, like but. Life. The heal bot, like, he can play, he can tap if he wants to, be uh, really at risk, and then drop Mountain on 4, and then maybe get even... Uh, That's too greedy, I think. What, so what you do, do by tapping is take double damage from this. You're not only taking the damage from the 4 on board, but you're going to play Mountain Giant and take 4 again. Oh, that's so greedy. But what was the option? Dropping Sun Fury on its own, I guess? Sun Fury can challenge the board, but... Mm. Yeah. I mean... Huffer. Some he has two of them too. Yeah, this is Huffer, by the way. Yeah. Oh well. Why does it have, have two more health? Yeah, I don't know what's up. And it doesn't charge. Why is it wearing a shield? That, that's a mama Huffer. <laughs> you know, protects the young cubs. But and the thing is, how much of your own mama is worth your opponent's mana? Oh man, you're gonna start well, at such a low actually, life here. It's actually okay considering that there's moltens, right? 
Yeah. So many Again, the whole point is threatening damage. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, here comes the mountain giant. Um, it seems like a little bit too little too late, but we'll see. Ecop's hand is so aggressive, he might just go all in here. I think there's yeah. there's actually a possibility of that. Um, the most damage you can push out, I think, is with Glaive Zuka, uh, abusive, and then coining a hero power. Yeah, or quick shot if he wants to. If you want to go like full on this turn damage, of course, over multiple turns the hero power is better. But yeah, like there's a really good argument to do so because if your opponent didn't get the taunts, then you're gonna race ahead. My question is, without any phase reach, because right now if he's getting taunted up into a mountain molten. He doesn't have any kill commands, right? He's got a quick shot, and that's all nice, but it's not enough to seal the game just yet. And that gives your handlock opponent the ability to just come back. And, I mean, he, hell, he could even push your face and, like, two giant hits, and then heal bot on the back end. The thing is, like, if, yeah, if he heal bots, though, he can't taunt. So if you can do, like, a crazy amount of damage, uh, it's often uh, acceptable, too. Yeah, well, the taunt comes out, like, right now, I guess. Right, but if, if the taunt comes down, then the heal doesn't come down. So, yeah. Yeah, it's over two turns. Kind of like the lethal you're trying to set up as a hunter. Like, he's still looking for uh, for damage here. Well, right now, well, he's, with he's the gonna win. He's got lethal, yeah. Yeah, he has lethal. Um... Yeah, that's a tough one for life coach. I mean, do you even have a choice? I think you have to go Molten, Heal Bot, and just, that's it. No, you actually, no, you don't die. You don't I die. Wonder. If you Molten, Owl the Leper Gnome, and taunt them up, you stay alive. Oh, you're right. You keep the two damage away from you. Well, that, that's a great, uh, great spot. I didn't spot that at all. That's a really great find. I completely forgot about the Owl thing. But if he doesn't do that, he's dead. Yeah, and I think he'll realize that he has to because quick shot hero power would kill him. Kill command also kill him, and there's no beast on the board, so. Yeah. Nice, nice, uh, nice find. You actually called it before he did it, so that's great. See, now you can tell uh, the entire. Yeah, universe. but it's life coach. <laughs> I mean, he he may have seen the play like a minute ago, and he just he just wants to draw <laughs> it out just in case he won't you know, right. screw it up. I mean, that that's just the player he is, so. So is there a lethal looming? Um, like with a combination of waves look at a buff your minion, no. let's say? Is no, there's there no way he here. can... I think he can... If he's playing explosive what traps, he right. might even try to force the issue of like, don't hit me unless you have heal bot. Um, but that's also challenging considering that I think he's probably running freezing traps uh, if it's hybrid. Oh yeah, with a heal bot so. that could also be super dangerous. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a very good option. Although he could be playing the split, he could be playing one of the explosive two freezings. Hmm. Question mark. Freezing. It's a freezing trap. If it's a freezing, you kind of want to juggle down that owl. Yeah. Uh, Sunscreen so, protector is also bad too, to be honest. Yeah. 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 But if like, you can juggle the, down the owl. The owl Ow, Everything's owl is bad. actually a body to, ta to taunt. Oh, juggle, juggle face. Juggle Not face. bad. Try to win next turn with a hero power weave in. Yeah, there it is. Alright, well. Hmm. Life coach has got to be breathing a sigh of relief here. This is a spot yeah. where you're very often dead. No matter what you do. Right. So Now, what's interesting, too, is that he sort of wants to pop the ancient... Oh, not the ancient, the, an the antique heal bot, excuse me, words are hard. The antique heal bot off the freezing trap so he can get oh, double no value. Way. But then at the same time, he won't have that time to do it. So, so you could try with the Sun Fury, worst case scenario, and then you trade with the owl into the juggler. So at least you get your taunter back. Yeah. And then uh, if it's explosive, you lose the owl by attacking face. If you if it's snake trap, you also risk. Wow. He's going to so do it. He played, he played around both explosive and snake oh, trap. Oh, that was going to be a painful uh, awakening call. Is that it? Uh, I think Life Coach is also forcing him to attack into the heal box. If the owl hits face, it's that's it. If the if the juggle hits face the of the owl, I think it's, it what is. It. There's a one in five chance. No, I think um, he's still alive. I'm not. I'm not insane, am I? Maybe I am. 
Maybe he already has lethal and I'm just miscalculating. No, he's, he's got it. He's got yeah, it. He's, he's got, got it already. Fun. Never mind. Yeah, I'll top deck is enough. Yeah. Yeah, Life, Life Coach had to make a, a play for the trade to prevent mm -hmm. that from happening. I, I, I also feel like it was a combination play. I think Life Coach realized, one, he needs that heal bot to come back. And the second thing is that he didn't want to like trigger Explosive Trap and get more damage onto him or a Snake mm -hmm. Trap and then Juggles hit his face or kill off his minions. Yeah, uh, there's so many traps to play around, right? He, another charge he, the bow. So he felt he, like yeah, he, he may have been thinking just the bow as well because he he wasn't um, he wasn't able to apply any pressure at all that game. Um, I think maybe that factor is possibly the biggest one because uh, the bow could just very well just attack the molten giant to uh, to push for yeah. a little bit more damage to the face eventually. But uh, yeah, some pretty some really high level play, but uh, not quite enough from uh, mm -hmm. Professor Life Coach there. Um, he will get another professor chance. Life coach. I, 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 I'm, it's, I'm it's going with DOS it. professor to you. Sir. Is it is it DOS professor? You you you've been in Germany. Actually, I think it's der professor. Der professor. But I think Whoa. DOS sounds funnier. So, so I think that's der just... sounds funnier, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> DOS professor. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, der professor. So the thing is, maybe Lothar is gonna have to adapt his uh, cosplay now that Life Coach has a new hairstyle. It's also a um, pretty important win for um, for uh, for Cloud Nine. Uh, you know, right. it, it puts them on the board it, instead of zero three and having Ecop benched, which is basically game over. Um, it's mm -hmm. it's one and two. Uh, the bench is basically lifted for them, and it's it's on Life Coach because um, Life Coach has a risky play here. But if he's not likely to play, uh, you can maybe narrow down a good matchup because RDU and Thais only each have one deck here. Agreed, agreed. I think now would be a good time to... Well, I... Th Did I'm you push the mage? like just Druid would be good here. From uh, Cloud9's side? Just because you think Thais is going to come out with mage? Yeah, I think it's too risky for Life Coach to bring to bring Life mm -hmm. Coach out again. I think um, Druid does pretty decent against the Paladin and against Freeze Mage. So I feel like that's a really good combination. Uh, or that, that your Druid would be good against. The only... Decent deck would be against Druid would be the patron, and even then Druids can definitely steal that game. So mm -hmm. I feel like this is an opportunity for, for Clenza to come out. Realistically though, I mean Life Coach has handlock, so Druid's not even in the that bad of a spot at all. So you can save it for later. So if Strife Crow wants to come back out again, then that's perfectly fine as well. Mm-hmm. Because um, you're always afraid of what Patriot... Like, if Life Coach is... If you're thinking Life Coach is in danger of being benched and what his decks are best against, and that's where you want to be able to slide it in. Yeah. And things like Mech Mage and whatnot against Handlock sometimes is, is, is pretty tricky. All right. Well, the Paladin comes out. Um, it's going to be probably an aggressive Paladin versus Mech Mage. Um, this is basically uh, largely a dice roll on who can get the best opening hand. Yeah, and I think the Blast Mage is a really great card in the matchup. If you can stick uh, a mech there on the board and it doesn't get removed, the Blast Mage stands to just take the entire board away with it. Yeah, but that's that's the big problem. Like, if, if both players have good opening hands, neither player is going to have a creature when yeah. turn four comes around. One uh, has Divine Shield, the other has, like, efficient ping trades, so... Right, right. Um, I think, actually, Paladin has the edge because Mech Mage is often playing a tempo game, and very often you'll have to ping just to get better trade, which uh, is usually going to mean that you fall behind on tempo. So if you fall behind on tempo, I think the Paladin just rolls you over. Well, that's kind of what they abuse, really, is when you miss your draw, they just like they just take the game right away. They do that against just about every deck, so I don't think it should be any different here, but there's a little bit more potential, maybe, because the deck is also aggressive, um, to counteract that with their own potential blowouts. So I think, I think it is more here, because like you have to consider that at their best, most competitive decks in Hearthstone are on a very similar level. And if mm -hmm. your win condition is to tempo out the opponent, um, that means that you're not going to be effective if you're losing even slightly. Okay, so you think whoever gets to deny the opponent, it's kind of like zoo versus zoo, who gets the first snowball right. going, never yeah. loses it? I, okay. I think it's exactly that. Like, right. I actually feel like the Paladin might have some comeback mechanics. Uh, we've seen Consecrate, we've seen maybe some uh, some late game 
uh, in the deck as far as Eloy is concerned. Probably not in this one with the <laughs> Lyra. <laughs> but yeah. um, we know for sure that we know for sure that there's no nothing like Flame Strike and Strike oh. deck. Oh what? my goodness! What? That is pretty brutal. Um, there's there's not really that good of a way to deal with Mech Warper. Okay. Yeah. And that will mean Strife Crow plays his entire hand. Well, you could play the Haunted Creeper now that you've got the Juggler to go with it on turn two. It's yes. not I think I like the Haunted Creeper. That was a great pickup. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh-oh. Ooh, the Greeds. Um, well. I guess he's trying to force his opponent to ping and waste his uh, turn two. His, right, that's right. his hope. His hope is that his opponent self-denies the tempo. And then he picks it up by not even wasting point. the coin. So it's very optimistic, though, um, considering that. Well, I think RDU's bluffing another one drop here. There's really no other play with the coin, unless yeah. he really feels so generous. Like he wants his opponent to ping that badly that he's willing to put <laughs> blessing of might on his lever gnome. But I don't. I think uh, we're not that desperate yet. Yeah. Well, let's just hold off on. What if he's got Molten Giants and he wants the Blessing of Might his opponent's one health creature? Yeah. <laughs> wow. The day, the day this becomes real. Paladin and Giants. Maybe just he's just role playing people. life coach. Just taking some time. Bro. Yeah. Um, Alright. Well, do you wait one more turn for Mech Warper? Because the Anoyatron's alright here. Yeah, so is. um. Pretty much any of the two. Every, is fine, yeah, I was gonna say everything's kind of okay. Uh, no, I th I think you just trade in Mech Warper. I mean, what can punish you from a Paladin here? This is like nothing. nothing. Not even a Steel of Light play would do it. So. Yeah, the only. No, no, nothing really. There's only Chargers that can, like if yeah. he's playing Rider, but. Then you're happy, I guess. Very that basic. Yeah. It's such now, a fast turn there. <laughs> yeah. So weird. Yeah, he planned it already. No, he already that is very it. life coach. Yeah. Sometimes he takes the entire turn, and the next turn just instantly drops something. And I've seen him do that with secrets. Mm -hmm. And that just like totally throws you off. You're like, wait, what? You just play that secret instantaneously, so it has to be this. And then it, I think this play has to be the triple one drop because the uh, the snowcher kind of seals out the game if you deny a true silver. Um, and next turn you have the the tempo freeze plus the the shredder, and really the only way your opponent come back is by like playing a big creature. So you deny a weapon and you deny a big creature. It seems like Strifecrow is really in a situation where he cannot lose this game. It has to be like consecrates. Yeah. Yes. There's also yeah, it's just consecration. I was thinking about um, quality, but I don't really think anyone's. I don't think these guys are playing it for sure. Just. People it's possible, who want to but with Leroy, way. yeah, with Leroy, it's much less likely. Let me how how likely do you think Leroy is in here? How what? Sorry. How likely do you think it is that uh, these type of paladin decks run Leroy? Um, it really depends on how like heavily aggressive they want to go. I, I don't even know what they cut. I think sometimes you cut like a king's fort because you just want to rush a bit more. But then, is your entire deck revolving around arcing golems and the wolf riders? Um, I think that's kind of the the time where it changes it really depends on the pocket of the meta uh yeah. leroy is you know much stronger against pressuring decks like for example even though quality might be good hypothetically against patron because you put them all down to one health the fact is you don't let them get to that point you just kill them um mm -hmm. so it's better tech against that kind of stuff a quality is like if you need to get past handlock and you can't but then you, you have owls like why do you need a quality and even then sometimes you just Barrel down with more damage, so I, I like Leroy. Um, that's why I always kind of scratch my head. It's like the Mech Shams that run Lightning Storm in a way. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like not some, consistent, right? It's no, it's like the one in five games or six games that you need the Lightning Storm. You don't even draw it half the time, so I, it's like rather just have base damage. Yeah, so, just like keep pushing the same consistent game plan instead of yeah, uh, spreading it out. Yeah, I love Frodan it. likes the base damage. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Well. As it so happened, uh, RDU did feel he had to push for a big creature on the board, uh, as I think he is rightful in, in assuming he had to, and uh, gets punished by that. And now it's I think it's basically do or die on a Consecrate draw. And even then, Consecrate still doesn't even guarantee that he deals with everything. Does so it do or die on a double Consecrate draw? It, there's 
four minions with three health. Uh, oh. Uh, there you go. Bam. I mean, he's going to need the jugglers to really do some cool stuff next turn. Yeah, but it uh, might. I mean, there's no way Strife Girl kills the Haunted Creeper here. So he could just uh, save the Haunted Creeper one turn if he wants. Yeah, and get a crazy double juggle. Well, he doesn't want it. Guess he wants to force the mage to ping twice. No, oh, no, there's no last, last mage. mage. Last yeah. mage off the unstable portal. About to blow oh my face. god. What? About to blow your why, mind. Why would you suggest something so disgusting? No! <laughs> this is so bad. This That's is bad in every way. This is definition of a card you do not play in this circumstance. What? Just, uh... Make that one one a five five, right? Uh, I don't know. I, maybe maybe you can play. Perhaps. It's plans for your shredder maybe to become a squirrel, man. It. Don't don't. Yeah, think, maybe, I think on maybe average, it's clearing the board. Tempo play, yeah. Because yeah. you're playing a three three. It's not the fact that you're just converting something into a potential one one. Take master gets a lot of hate, man. But back in the days, art is choir, man. Art Back in the days when Gadget Dan Auctioneer used to be stealth, this was your answer to it as like a conversion. I hated that though. That was like. Oh. oh. Yes. <laughs> it did nothing. Oh no, it's oh. a beast. Oh, it makes no difference. Sorry. <laughs> oh man, I remember people tried really hard to make Beast Druid work. They put weird stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I like the Hemet Tinker combo still. Emmett Tinker combination. Yeah, All right. I think it's still like top tier. We're just waiting to see it happen. Reasonable. Oh, that's not exactly that. That uh, has to be the worst card in the deck at this stage. Yeah, it and has I to think be, right? uh, there's nothing more. Well, at least it's at least you can play. If you drew like a seven mana minion, you couldn't play it, just lose. Yeah, but then you win because you play it. Yeah, I guess so. You'd have it for the following turn, but in this turn, you'd be running dead. Alright, where Strife Crow, I think, is just gonna choose to, uh, to go for it. If there's another Consecrate, Artie, you can come back. And Artie, you also drew the worst card. Ooh, his deck. that's a pretty good card, though, no? Yeah, that might work as a Consecrate with, uh, with enough RNG. Yeah, I think yeah. you actually want to dude first to see what it's gonna be like. Mm hmm. Oh! Oh! No. Wow. Just trust in the juggle. Oh, Insane. Two. Just missing a tiny bit of Face. damage. Perfect juggles. And now, oh, oh, well, hello. Oh, uh, that's uh, interesting, but I think that is so painful. Now, right? He has to play it? it. It's just, no, you, you can't save this. You have to play it as the body. If you don't play this, you'll lose for sure. And look at that. RD, you could kill this and then, and then more. Yes, he will kill it. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh awful. that's a bad one. That's a really bad one. That's the worst. So that's one more. So that's one more. The face. Just hit anything, not the face. Oh, I'm disappointed. Oh. It, it right. could have been disastrous. Look at that dragon synergy, man. Wait, are these whelps dragons? Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. One day we're gonna get the dragon command. There's gonna be like a hunter card that deals ten damage if you have oh, a whelp. Oh man. Page. Oh man. But Blast Mage is uh, 5 damage to the opponent's face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is. Um, Artie's going to gain 2 life killing it with the True Silver, so he's not going to be on the threat of dying just to one to any one card. Right. Right. And he can still keep healing up. So I think at this point, it's all about Strife Crow getting a mid sized body that Artie you just can't deal with. Uh, that is unfortunately for him not it. Yes. What is he's the mind favor ever going to do? Yeah, you have to keep in mind, like when, when you're at 8 life, um, if your mage opponent is pinging your creatures, you're very happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're forcing him to start, you know, staying away from your face. Yeah. Oh! No! Oh! 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 oh my God. Did someone call for the doctor? <laughs> okay. Equality oh. top deck is probably. I see your two one ones <laughs> and I raise you a seven seven. <laughs> oh. Wait, no, that does nothing, unfortunately, uh, for RDU. Oh, man, okay, so... That's game, no matter what. He can't even draw off Divine Favor. No, it's no. not game. He has to kill the Dr. Boom with his weapon. Yeah, but he... The Boom bots do one damage. Actually, no, I think going face and taking the gamble is, is the way to go. Just having the Boom bots... Okay. Okay, that's, that's fine. 
That's no, fine. GG. So hit the one one. No, he's, he's, he's dead to the ping. Yeah, he is. Yeah. No, he's not. He's well, not. No, he's just nine. He'll he'll be at nine. Oh. But he has to. Um... Wait, what? No, he just killed himself. The five five had to hit yeah. the. Boom. Uh yeah, so that way he takes no damage. That's a bit of a misplay. Nope. Oh, but he, he knew he was gonna hit face. That's right. Yeah. Confirmation bias is confirmed. Confirmation right? bias. Yep. Drive go for this high relief because that was tough. Um, tough is nice. it's not tough is an understatement. That was holy cow. That was a sick entry, Noxious. Like a chair spiral, and then you suddenly appear like a magic trick. Yeah, somebody uh, rang out the door. Cat while doing that. Yeah, but, with I mean, the mad scientist haircut, right? I, I can't believe how, how insane these games are. It's like, Strifegar had one of the most unbelievable openers you can get out of that deck, going first at least. You can do a little bit better going second, but I mean, he, he didn't get the yeah. coin. Um, and then RDU needed a Consecrate, and he got one on turn four, which is pretty good um, to not lose the game right there. And then he's going to lose the game unless he drew the other Consecrate or had, I guess, the second juggler with ridiculous juggles. So I really good hits, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he was going to win the game almost 100% unless, I think, like... Dr. What? Boom came out, yeah. Like, it was like Fireball Dr. Boom or Fireball into Frostbolt or something. Yeah, it, it uh, had to be running burn cards, exactly. So it had to be like Frostbolt into Fireball or Fireball into Frostbolt. Um, he got and, the best or Dr. Card. Boom. And then it did happen. The best burn card the boom in Boom RNG happened. <laughs> like, like RDU actually still had a chance to win the game, but uh, the boom bots were too much. It's crazy stuff. Crazy stuff indeed. Can you imagine if uh, you just get those Ronin top decks, and then you have to like cast three arcane missiles with a board full of one ones for lethal? And you still win it because Avenging Wrath sometimes kills Ragnaros. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. All right, well, that's going to be a tied series. We go from a best of 11 to a best of 7 now. Who can take the early lead off at this point? Shaping up the lineups here. Let's take a look at what we have remaining. Um, I I'm, still, I'm still okay with the fact that Cloud9 has this Druid that's pretty decent. I thought that was a weak link originally. Now I'm going to shift my attention to Strife Gross Paladin. I'm not sure if it's going to be aggressive or it's going to be more of a control or mid-range approach. What do you I think, think overall uh, Strife has had not great, but like better than 50% results with his mid-range Paladin. So I think yeah. that's enough reason to keep bringing it back each week. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. The that thing is though that, that the Freeze Mage kind of crushes that most of the time. Yeah. I'm always worried about that kind of stuff, too, because if you win a couple of games and then it feels like the opposite side of variance will eventually catch up to you. Because maybe mm -hmm. he wins those games and he's above 50%, but he has to gravitate a little bit below that, so he wins, he loses the next few. It's kind of like, that, well, I feel like uh, the mid-range pally is to, to Strive Crow, I guess, what, the Druid is to Thice. Is that deck that no, re no one really gets good scores with, um, but somehow he makes it work every week, so... Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I wouldn't mind Strifegrow coming out here again with Paladin. There seems to be too many classes that are good against it, though, if he's bringing mid range. The aggressive Paladin will take advantage of it. Uh, the Patron Warrior is still very strong against Paladin. And um, the Freeze Mage is also problematic for Paladin. It's not, it's not unwinnable by all means, but it's still very difficult. So I say table it for now. Try to see if you can line it up with Handlock. Uh, and then, you know, go... Well, with I mean, you, could you do Freeze Mage as well? You could, it's just that I, yeah. I don't really like Paladin against Freeze Mage these days. Um, just because I think Paladin a lot has of healing, to, right? Yeah, I think you have to account too much for aggro, so things like Zombie Chow is really what you're pushing for, and then all yeah. of a sudden, uh, your, your board isn't as good as it normally is. Yeah, well, you have to tech like really heavily again. against it, too. Warlock versus Druid. Um, this is a matchup that uh, often favors the Druid, mm -hmm. as uh, turning out those Molten Giant walls is not really going to work, because usually you're going to die from like uh, one of the teen life values. Yes. Not to mention that Druid has an answer to turn four almost always, right? You drop the Twilight Drake, they silence it. You drop the Mountain Giant, they game hunter it. Um, and then you also give them so much time to ramp. Like, sometimes 
Druid doesn't have anything to, to play. They don't have the Wild Growth on turn two, but then they don't draw any minions, and then they Wild Growth anyways on like turn four, and they still pressure you from the mid game on. So. Yeah, well, yeah, because turn a uh, turn six Ancient of Lore is enough to to make you just want to quit the game, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's just early enough that it's gonna be a problem, but it's not late enough that you can abuse the fact that it costs them seven mana to do. So yeah, I've one thing. I'm, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was, I was thinking about BGH. Like, mm -hmm. BGH doesn't hit very much of the meta anymore. Like, yeah, it hits Doctor Boom. Patron yeah. Warriors and aggressive decks that kill Patron Warriors before they can do anything. Right, that's about it. Yeah, Patron warped everything. Um, like, it, Patron is a meta game warping deck by its very nature. Because the moment you try to counter it, even if it, if you push it out of the meta for like a day, um, next time your counter Patron deck is beat then patron has to come back to fix that so it's like it takes only two steps to, uh, for patron to come back in in relevance so bgh never gets time to become an impactful card anymore guys i think kalento is laying on his bed yeah i think so too Just like casually tell me another tournament. game for two hundred fifty thousand dollars that they're playing with that you can lay on your bed monopoly and play in front of tens of thousands of people that's hearthstone <laughs> yeah, of course you added that clause at the end there, so I couldn't oh, wow. actually write. It's, it's so it's it's wow. so cool that you can do that. <laughs> so like, I think, I think we maybe Emperor. missed something here. No, no, I did. That, I... that emperor draw is like off the wall. Yeah, it's it's on the board. In fact, yeah, but Clento's still in his bed, so he's not he's not terribly surprised. Yeah, he's like, he's, oh, he, 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 there's no emotional reaction. In fact, he looks stressed. He's like, I drew emperor. Oh God. Oh god! They're gonna now. they're gonna nerf it now. They're gonna nerf it as soon as they see this. <laughs> it's it's gonna be another Reddit thread. It's not yeah. it's not fifty damage with no board, but it's gonna be it's gonna be the emperor that beats uh, beats life coach, right? Yeah, yeah. The one. I mean, I've had I've had games where like you innervate Thorson oh, like one. really early out, like maybe you can double innervate and then just draw nothing. But this is not nothing at all. He has some really quality minions in his hand. Yeah, I think it's hell when you get Emperor Thorsten with like a Wrath and like some kind of second innervate and it goes nowhere. Whoa! Oh, no whoa! Time. Kalento going for hey, I like that giant, please, thank you. I can see that the, the reasoning. So see that that is why we're casting. That's why that's he's Kalento. playing the game. That's Hearthstone. But that's even if it hits much giant, bad. is it really that good? You steal it at least. If you play the Emperor, what do you do? Play like, Sylvanas afterwards. Yeah. And, and then, then he Shadow, Shadow flames, flames a giant and you lose everything. Mm -hmm. that, that's the big problem with playing Emperor here, is just because Giant to Shadow Flame would just lose you the game right away. That is really yeah. interesting. That is really interesting. Yeah. I, like, I like that you pointed that out, Noxious. Because now Life Coach doesn't want to play this giant. Because he's foregoing he's development great. on the board by doing it. Void Color is still really good, though, isn't it? Kind of. Gets you uh, it's, it's so that, it's so risky. That might yeah, be never a mind. Bad, <laughs> never mind. You don't want to give him the Malganus. Yeah, like if if he has a wrath or a keeper, Void mm -hmm. Caller actually gives him Malganus full health. Like straight up, yeah, full health. Exactly. Yeah, never mind. Not not so good after all. You could just play Mountain and feed him the Giant, and then you Hellfire everything off the board. It's no issue for you. Well, it's not going to be a Shade for three three anymore. It'll be a four four. So it does complicate a little bit. Hmm. Well then, that's an that's an interesting game so far. It's gearing up to be a. Uh, it's already full of decisions that I think a lot of players would have made differently, including myself. So. Yeah. I mean, these are two of the the most brilliant minds. At least what we when we have in our current player pool, maybe it'll change as uh, more people get into the game and we get to see. Different players go at it, but life coach and Clunto, it almost gets this is like as high level as it gets in terms of what these guys or plays are making. Yeah, it's not life, life coach's coach turn, and he looks like he's, he's roping. Rope. I was gonna say, life coach is roping on Clunto's turn. That's intense. I think Clunto's. Um, I mean, he's. I think he's trading for sure. I mean, the reason to play Sylvanas is to trade here. Unless now you see, he played into your hand, so you're thinking he's got something on his mind. Uh, no, I but I think it's too good to ever not do. Like, I think this is going to be a taunted Druid of the Claw. Mm -hmm. And you, yeah, you don't attack. So you don't really enable uh, Hellfire to get great value. 
And you, the only answer if you don't Hellfire is like Dark Bomb. And if you Dark Bomb, you can't do anything on three mana, right? So you just mm -hmm. mess with the Warlock another turn. He still kind of did. There's one mana floating, and as a result, it disrupts his flow a little bit. Oh, Life, Life looks really upset. Yeah, he's playing poker on three tables at the same time, and right now he just lost an all in, so sorry. Imagine having life coach across to the poker table though. Thinking like this. Intimidation. I mean people did experience that at one point in time. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Uh -oh. That is not looking too good for life coach. So next turn he's looking at fifteen damage. Yeah. And Damn. he's in a position where if he plays really defensive, uh, like Yobot, then his opponent has free range of pressure and develop for you. Well, that might be your only hope, then you can go Molten Shadow Flame. That might be the only way you really push for a board clear, which then helps you stabilize into Malganus. Yeah, it kind of helps stabilize just because if you're not going to heal bot that turn, you're just never going to heal bot. You have to think about that. And you are going to need that 8 health. Kalento has to be trading away the 4 3. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there's really no incentive to keep it on board because then it becomes a target where he can Shadow Flame pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Thor's been making the silence even cheaper so he can squeeze in other cards after silencing it. It's basically an owl now with 3 extra health. That that's that's game, right? Like there's nothing that life coach can do. He has to tap into an answer. Nope. Wow. That's it. Extremely one sided game. Yeah, that's what Wild Growth and Innervate will do to you, I guess. Once in a while you'll get those games that you just can't take. Maybe that's the reason people still bring Druid to tournaments. There are snowball games that just can't be stopped. Yeah. And um I think I think one of the biggest thing was uh was the Sylvanas play, as you mentioned, uh Noxious, how it, it denied the giant, it denied the big turn four. It allowed Kalento to always be winning in the game. And when you're always winning, you're, I mean, the pressure just mounts up to such an insane amount. And yeah. uh, it really wasn't anything uh, Life Coach could do. It seemed like he was uh, a bit distressed over one of his decisions, but I mean, not, none of the other options really looked particularly appealing. So yeah. I can't blame him personally. Right, I think that was a good combination of like Clinton making a really strong play and then Life Coach not having a a play for yeah, good because usually Handlock is supposed like it's known for a deck that has answers, right? That's why you play it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a deck that has yeah. options, but it had nothing there, like all the game. Ninety nine percent of the players, and I, I don't even care about the one person be like, well, that was a fairly obvious play as a resident <laughs> Druid expert. I have got right, five thousand right, right. wins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ninety nine percent of people would have put out Thor's in there because of like what it gains, it reduces heavier minions, it's a 5-5 five, five body, you know, mm -hmm. you can challenge the next giant, whatever. That was a really great play though. Good stuff. Good yeah. Stuff. Absolutely. And that puts uh, Cloud9 ahead. Yeah, by, from, by uh, March. From a terrible start to uh, the start of an insane comeback. It's almost like we saw this uh, today already. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So based off of the current pat patterns, it's going to be three more wins for Cloud9 unless Nilum can break the momentum. That's well, Cloud9, Cloud9 is considerably ahead. Um, this is like the, the best position to be in in this best of 11 yeah. where you, you had just come off of a win. So all of your players uh, are available to play without any risk and each player needs to only win one game. Uh, whereas uh, if you look at Nilum's uh, board, uh, they have Life Coach, who's coming off of a loss, so it's a risk to play him. But, uh, yeah, if you don't, you're limiting your class pool again. So, you know, a bad position, uh, a game behind, and the opportunity to bench the one player with two classes. Um, a lot of negative factors from already being behind. Yeah, that's right. We, we did say that Druid was a class that looked already pretty good against the field of what Nilam was bringing. But taking a look at the rest of the classes now, I feel like it's a pretty strong advantage, like you said, so I have to agree. But it's never over till it's, till it's over. Uh, you have to evaluate what these guys can do per game as opposed to the overall score because we've seen people go through droughts for a while. Yeah. Um, 
I would be okay with sending out pretty much anything here from Cloud9. I feel like each deck has a pretty I, good matchup yeah. and a couple of bad ones. So whatever you send out is fine. Yeah, mm. I think that one of the, the weirdest matchups to navigate is like Freeze Mage with the uh, Patron Warrior because it's so long. And they, it might come down to like two different things where either, you know, one wins on fatigue by navigating the fatigue game better than the other one. But they kind of have to be on the same page uh, where they both want to play the same game. Right, the fatigue game, or you know your opponent warrior is trying to be aggressive about it as opposed to playing it slowly. So, I kind of that's one of the, the my favorite matchups after Patron came out. Freeze Mage. I think uh, well. I think Paladin here might be the the favorite class just because of how much pressure you can put on the warrior. Mm, I don't know. Those one ones are not as problematic in Patron as they used to be in Control. Of course, it depends on what Clento's playing, right? But he's been playing a lot of Patron. So. Right. Well, mid mid-range paladin is certainly one of the worst decks imaginable against the patron warrior, but I feel like if you ramp up the aggressiveness on your right. paladin deck so much, it's just like a tipping point that uh really it's like you know, it's like breaking the gates. It's just way <laughs> too much stuff. Yeah, <laughs> unleash the divine shields. Yeah, exactly. Unleash the divine shields, unleash the Leroy. It's I mean, it's just so much pressure that you just cannot deal with it. So I, I feel like a paladin has to be good. Pretty good matchup here. Mm. Yeah, you're right. You're, you're right. It's possible. Like I don't know enough about the matchup. It's true though that uh, this deck, um, you know, the Patron Warrior deck needs a lot of time to set up, which is not the case of the Paladin deck. It just kind of goes in and does its thing. And when Patron can respond, then maybe it has a chance of coming back. Sometimes it's just too late. Yeah. Look at this whirlwind, right? Like, how do you? And like, even if you can come back as a patron warrior from a super aggressive deck, um, often you kind of ruin your combo to the point where um, you kind of break your win condition or you delay it too long. So I like a Death's Bite to kill a 2-2 here. Just because even if a Blessing of King comes out, then you're safe on the following turn. And you can play the Acolyte with Whirlwind on top of that. But we'll see what he ends up doing. There's a few lines of play I think that are okay. I don't think Whirlwind right now is any good, unfortunately. Unless you go with the Acolyte, perhaps. Nope. Yeah. Apparently Whirlwind only, is good yeah. enough. And he does it in a way where he doesn't even draw a card with the Acolyte. Yeah, that's yeah, what I find That's find really weird. Because I, I thought he would uh, play around the fact that Chusaro was going to come out anyway. But he's fine with one card. I think he does. He's like okay with the cards in his hand. Two Despite is another set of whirlwinds. He doesn't want to draw too many cards for divine favor, uh, so he can get pressure out of the game. Because he realizes there's there's one way to lose, and that's taking too much damage too quickly. And by getting more cards, he loads his opponents up with ammo. Well, the ghoul is going to be amazing here. So yeah, ghoul is fantastic. This is one of the decks that is absolutely super good against uh, dissecting whatever Paladin can throw at him, because there's so many one-health minions, and Unstable Ghoul is yet another reason why. What about playing Leroy right now? Because you're never going to get any more value out of it, right? Like, it's before Patron, uh, it's before Frothing, I mean, where they're not going to get value out of it. Yeah, you're not going to really, like, put Blessing of Kings on Leroy. The best that you can ever assist Leroy in is, like, an Argent Protector, but you don't even have it in hand, so I like going for it. So. Yeah, you just don't have much... Uh much of anything else to play. It is starting to look patron favored already. Hmm. Yeah. No, it's, it's it's I think patron if they get the whirlwinds, which sometimes they whiff. Sometimes it's just whiff on the whirlwinds and the ghouls early. And that is even ghouls sometimes, you know, Iron Cal comes out, you're out of the game. Um, but when you have the whirlwind effect, already I think you're super far ahead of any of those swarmy aggressive decks that have been coming up on the ladder. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I kind of knew that the, the, the typical aggressive Paladin deck is going to have some issues against Patron, but I, I thought maybe with, with, the, uh, with the Leroy, with this, like,
uh, you know, face damage is Paladin. Let's just be honest. Uh, the odds of you actually having face damage worth anything are pretty slim. It's just, um, I think Konto is just trying to dump his hand as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so even though you really want to armor up here, I think we'll probably see the ghoul. It looks like... So the frothing on its own could just be an almost lethal, right? Like, no, not quite lethal next turn, but... You have to play the ghoul here, right? Or Because otherwise, yeah. you're really not accomplishing anything. Because the charge moon comes out, and you're maybe still out of it. Ooh. Wow, he armors up. Okay. I think he's accounting for a two-card combination that can kill him. I don't <laughs> see it now that Leroy is out. Yeah. Double I Consecrate. Him. You wait one turn, right? You can't do it now. It's suicide. Well, then again, before no, the you, patience, you can do it now. Right? You can do it now because if if you wait till next turn, your next draw is mm. dead. But if mm. you drew it now, if you do it now, your one one challenges the frothing. Who would have thought? So actually, I think you do have to. It sucks, but which is to. why uh, it's understandable to think you have to save it. But I think if you save it, you just don't have a win condition. I think Clanto now feels more comfortable playing battle reach. Uh, you saw his opponent had three mana remaining, chose the hero power, it was the last it's, card. Yeah. Uh, this is an opportunity where he can use it, finally. Then, he just needs then, to pick up armor smiths, and then he's smooth sailing from that point onwards. It's so weird. No this, way. this frothing only has 11 attack and doesn't charge. It's like, I don't know, man. The, it looks like it's a bad frothing. What's going on? Yeah, right? Oh, that's, that's going to be the nail in the coffin, I think. Yeah, probably. That frothing doesn't even lift. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got like 120 on, on the bench. That's a lot less than you throw down, right? Yeah. It's, it's it's way more, actually. I'm just a frail little boy. Oh, that's a good card. You no, can buff your not. opponent's frothing. That's not a good card at all. You can make it good can again. You, can you buff the opponent's with of course. Yes. Of course, yeah. Yep. It used to be uh, something you could think about doing with like uh, BGH. Yeah. Or Molten Giant. Oh man. If the times got really desperate, yeah. Or if you're trying to tempo it for the win. Mm -hmm. You've never done that for then? You, you've never played uh, no, our I, I try to our avoid. Decks, I think. I try to avoid playing this deck. Um, okay. And also, what? I don't. Also, you don't really use Blessing Kings offensively. I know that in one one of my better moments, uh, I ended up having lethal with the uh, kings on Tyrion BGH weapon out. That's that's a nice combo too. Right, oh, you attack for you attack for six, and then you get uh, another five. That is really cool. All right, well, unless R D draws the fine paper now, so he is done next turn. I don't foresee him being able to do it otherwise. That's gonna Ooh. wrap it up. About nine, four games in a row. Are we going to see the reverse? That wasn't a reverse sweep, right? Didn't Hillem take it 2-0 at, at first? Yes, I believe they did. Let it let it happen. Let it happen again. It's not going to be a triple bench, unfortunately. But Wow, he didn't Kings. I, I feel you have to there. Yeah, just maybe. He's hoping for a charger, turns. like Arcane Golem. And then yeah, but the charge for damage. You have to divine favor into that, and you're you're on a two turn clock, so your kings has to be effective just to prevent damage when you're at ten life. Yeah, it's a fair question. Fair question to ask. Well, so all right, four two. Kalento gets the the first check mark of the match here. I mean, yeah. someone had to get it. Cloud Nine is uh, on four points now. Six games in, we got with the first check mark, so it's uh, it's not that unusual. It's still very standard. Yeah, this... and. Uh, Nylon's struggling, man. Nylon's struggling uh, yeah, a lot. Nylon's on a must-win situation, because if they go down again, then there's four games for one deck to get a win. That's just too many chances. Well, I think we also... Like, they had a guaranteed top spot if last week they hadn't lost with the score they did. But they actually yeah. did lose with one too many uh, losses, which was mm -hmm. an issue for them. And today, they might just have an, like a bad score, which is going to throw them out of top two. That that's not yeah, something they're looking enough. to do. Yeah, after oh, two weeks of almost guaranteed top two, Nylum? Yeah. Well, if they lose here, they're out of the top two for sure. 
Yeah, uh, but that's what I'm saying. If, they had if an they almost lose year really badly, they might be like a lot lower on the list, I guess. But that's about it. Yeah. Do right. we know what kind of paladin? No, we don't know what kind of paladin. No. We have not seen too many of these decks. In fact, we haven't even seen the Warrior of Life Coach. I don't believe. Or the Mage from Tice. Or the Mage of Tice. Yeah. In fact, it's been already used Paladin and Life Coach's Handlock, which keeps losing. Yeah, that's true. Well, so based off handlock. the pattern here, it seems like Nolem's trying to avoid getting benched. They keep alternating. Like Life Coach came out on games three and five. Uh, already used Paladin came out four and six. So. If they can follow this pattern, then maybe Nellum would jump again to Life Coach, maybe even Life Coach Warrior or Warlock. Maybe Tice but comes out right around now because he hasn't played in a while. Does he have but, a bad matchup amongst like Freeze Mage against Paladin and and the Warlock? I think are both fine because whatever Warlock archetype you run into, you're usually okay because you can burn them down either late game or control them if they're a Zoo. Uh, which you know, you know it's Zoo. exactly. He's got the info and Paladin, I guess. It's usually, I guess, a pretty easy matchup because you can control the board, you know, all game long. And how is Paladin really going to pop the ice barriers um, and the ice blocks altogether? Yeah, I'd yeah. go for the the mage here for Tice, and then the best chance is probably Ecops, um, Warlock, unless Strifeco is bringing an aggressive Paladin, in which case that's also semi okay. But I still go with the Zoo because the Zoo is really really dynamic with the board i think when you when you're facing a team that only has two classes left um it doesn't really matter what you play too much like uh most most of the play counterplay is in like the two or three win kind of situation right now i think uh i'm just hoping for some uh some good old hearthstone rng on their side well i can start with this if Fr uh tice is playing the freeze mage and is able to take down the zoo, then it'd be good. But zoo is getting better and better with against freeze mage with every single content patch that comes out. It feels like zoo when it first was facing up against freeze mage, it was literally running into brick walls. Yeah. Um, considering that freeze mage was faster, it was like you know freeze was cheaper, and then zoo was less death rattle centric. But now with void colors out, now Ganas came out with GVG, and now you have. Like imp gang boss pushing out one ones every time it gets hit. It's it's just really hard to deal with the board all at one time as freeze mage. It's really the the heavy hitters that kind of screw up your plan. Um, the the Malganus and the Doctor Room that I think is in Ecop's deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is in Ecop's deck. He ended up uh, discarding it. Yeah. Lothab as well is a really big swing card, and it's included pretty much in all those lists. And if you can just lock the board that one turn that you're about to get uh, knocked out the board, very often you just win on the Whoa. back. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. Hello. I was oh, going to wow. say that's pretty bad. Dice's oh, wow. hand sucks. Well, he's got guaranteed double ice block at least. He just needs not to top deck an ice barrier well, ever again. Yeah, but that's not what you want. Mad, Mad Scientist is okay, actually. Like... Tice hand isn't that bad, like in the early game. He's not going to get run over, but he needs to draw into things that do stuff. Because having double ice block and perhaps a, a bad arcane intellect just means uh, you can have very very clunky turns. Most likely, he's going to have to coin here as well. But um, coin yeah, ping into mad in, scientist, I guess. Exactly. In terms of the the matchup, I feel like freeze mage still has the edge, but. The Zulok, with its current flavor, especially the one that Ecoff is running, has made like such a big run to catch up that it's almost even, I think. Almost even, wow. Uh, yeah. I would definitely say Freeze Mage is favored, but to call it 50-50 is, is very yeah, ambitious. I think like maybe 60-40. Okay. That's a pretty big whiff, though, if you look at... Well, I mean, he got the Iron Beak out, which very often can be crucial, where you just negate the uh, the Mad Scientist, but usually you want to keep those for Doomsayers, in which case that Knife Drawer dying and summoning a secret for your opponent is just horrible. And that hand that looked okay is only looking a tiny bit uh, more clunky. But yeah. it's all about that... Uh, okay. It's all about that Void Caller not messing up your plans, basically. Just draw a second Void Caller. Uh, very important to uh, trade first, as uh, you're probably playing Arcane Intellect here, and you don't want to Arcane Intellect into 
Um, double ice double barrier. barrier. I've seen that happen before too. It was it yeah. Forsen? Uh, not it wasn't for Forsen just drew it off the top, but I've seen like players rush too much and then uh, yeah. accidentally draw into something that's that's supposed to be drawn from the mad scientist instead of the, the actual card. So the the thing is, like, if that actually happened, if you would arcane intellect into your two remaining secrets, it would be a very educational experience. I don't think you will ever <laughs> ever, ever do make it again. <laughs> educational. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you get nominated right. for that uh, educa educational stream, Crip? I don't think so. Not this okay. time. No, Crip gets nominated for the other ones. The, all the other ones, okay. Most then, of the uh, ones. Yeah. Yeah. I don't educate people. Well, educating us in the way of the zoo right I'm now. Not, I, don't, I don't want to say anything. You, you don't feel educated right now, Foden? No, I, Crip is not dropping enough education actually, on you. Actually, I, I do. I actually have recently enjoyed Crip's recent uh, review on the cards. I think. Yeah. I know some people really like, you know, Brian Kibler and Strife Crow and Rain Nan, but I also enjoy listening mm. to Crip's. Well, in fact, I don't really do card reviews. I take Crip's stuff and then I repeat it. Wow. And, and just one more, one more to the Crip circle, Drake. I think it's always very impressive to hear him talk about it because he's also giving initial thoughts in like five seconds versus some people have to read like the entire card list and then like think for 15 hours and then yeah anyways back to the game. game what is hearthstone <laughs> all right well in, in this game it seems like uh yeah. ecop just having game. another super clunky hand here because like it, it's again the doom guard malganus lothab hand which means you have to play lothab which means you're going to be really upset <laughs> that's really everything that's a oh, crazy pickup for e cup. <laughs> it is. Wow. Did we say crazy pickup? Because I mean, it, it kind of sounds the same. Peacock? What? Yeah. This this, this oh, would be the, the least effective <laughs> board clear ever from a freeze mage. Like, yeah. Well, yes. What would you do here? You you get like, in the worst case, you get two one ones, a yeah. seven nine, and a nine seven. Oh, this is hell. This would be hell. Actually, if you do the the Doomsayer uh, Frost Nova play, you might improve the board of your opponent. But you could also get a second board wipe or get the initiative on use on on clearing it, right? Because like the opponent will not be able to. Well, that's this is the best part. Like if you're Ecop, you even silence the Doomsayer. Yeah, Ecop's got like the god hand. That second <laughs> board caller was crazy. Would you uh would you even tap if you played Doomsayer? Because then you risk the chance of drawing another demon that you don't No, want. never. I think you could consider it, because if you get an egg, it's even more funny. <laughs> this is like force of sport wipe yes. against uh I forget you who draw knows. two eggs. <laughs> tap and drop two eggs. Yeah. Is yeah. that too many minions? No, it's not. Is that an egg? No, it's not. Oh crap huh? hola. That's a demon. You drop that? Ah, uh, what? No. No. He wants, he, want, he wants him to flame strike next turn, right? So then he yeah, wants he wants to afford the flame strike to then yeah. get all these demons after there's nothing else left. Because if you let the demons come out, then Thais might just blizzard into flame strike into some other AoE, and then you're kind of losing it. So. But he does mm -hmm. give up the owl, though. That's another thing too. He could have kept the owl for a second guarantee shutdown of the doomsayer, or freeze, unfreeze a minion. And then push for damage if he needs to. So he does give up flexibility by doing this. Oh, that's wow. one turn away. One turn away there for uh, for Thais with the Blizzard. Huh. It's gonna be face tanking a little bit too much damage for his taste, I'm sure. Hmm. Yeah, what do you do in this position? This is so awkward. It seems like you have to blizzard because it's so much damage, but how do you start to win the game if you do that? I think you might just have to take a round of damage, just like mm -hmm. ping the owl and maybe frostbolt like the Lothab. Yeah, you put it, put it in blizzard range and then you go for the uh, Doomsayer blizzard play. I mean, in this case, it wouldn't do much because the spiders would spawn and the Doom Guard plus the spiders might be enough. I mean, everything is so. Everything's gonna backfire for Thais, I feel. Unless he picks up another Blizzard or a Flame Strike, things are going to escalate to the point of no return. It's pretty rough. The thing is, like, Blizzard next turn doesn't even guarantee his safety because it mm -hmm. pops out from the Void Caller and whatnot. 
In this case, yeah. one caller is going to pull out one of the Doom Guards. And That's still fine, I guess. It, just keeps it. Oh, Dr. Boom. Oh, okay, e -cup drew like a god, right? I'm not insane. This was... Kind of spots even yeah, like it's only boom one bots. boom bot. Oh my yeah. god. What's the point? Yeah, yeah the why would you... It's crazy. Dr. Boom is bad. It only has one boom bot. Dr. Boom is bad. Yeah. Like, who yeah. would even play Dr. Boom if it only gave one boom bot? There's way better 7 mana 7-7s seven to play in the game. Yeah. Well, I like the new 7-8, right? The war golem with a helmet. Yeah, that one. <laughs> God. Oh, that really you goes. trolls! <laughs> <laughs> wow, he even plays around Cone of Cold by doing this. Pretty clever. Actually, like. now there's a chance that Thais can take the game, right? Yes. That Alex draws that changes everything. Right, but um, you don't seem to believe Frodan. He doesn't have enough. He needs to draw more damage. No, he doesn't. He really doesn't. He he plays the Antonitis and Ice Lances the Doctor Boom. It prevents mm -hmm. lethal this turn, and then he exactly. can Alice Raza, so Ice Block prevents that one. And, and then wins. his opponent is on fifteen, so if Malganus can't come down, and honestly it's possible that it it, it won't, I guess, maybe. But yeah. <laughs> Crip is uh, is very hopeful. I guess in this case there's really very little that Dice can do. Oh, he's gonna opt to play the Abyss Lord to the Archmage. He wants to play the, the the Archmage next turn because the Doomsayer is effectively acting as a a board clear in and of itself anyway. So I mean, you're you're correct, Crip, in the in the vacuum of things. But then there's also things like Malganus that throws a weird mix into stuff. What I do what I do like though about the situation is that he's an owl. He already used a Lotheb, so it becomes much weaker. Um, so many but he, here he's going to drop Malganus. And be perfectly fine. He can kill, right? Yeah, he can kill a Doomsayer. His opponent has shown that he can't do AOE onto the board, so this might be okay. Thais might think this is just an insane hand. It, he's still not out of it. Like with a Blizzard top deck, a Flame Strike, a back to back Flame Strike might also cut it. But here's here's what I don't like about Thais's play. Like with this play, he still loses against Malganus. But if your opponent didn't have Malganus, this doesn't work, and the other play wins you the game guaranteed. True, right? True that. Yeah, that, that, that's what I think. Uh, I thought he would do because I thought it was like the the most obvious game winning play. Um, but maybe he assumes his opponent has Malganus based on previous plays because that card has been in his hand since the you know what turn one basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But maybe Can you Alistraza your opponent if he has Malganus. Probably not. Well, it's not damage, right? It's like it's like weird damage. It's like target <laughs> stuff. Yeah. You so can't you even can't target the opponent. An immune if, target. Um, I wonder if you yeah. try to play Alistraza, if it just lets you play and it automatically plays it on yourself then. Oh my oh, god. Oh, that'd be funny. That would be hell. I wouldn't assume so. I hope not. Science! That, that would really suck for like co-op. <laughs> <laughs> Crip wants to see somebody be miserable at the end of this experiment. I'm I'm really curious because I, I I don't know I've never been in the situation to Alistraza an immune opponent. I've never seen that before. I would so. assume not because what like let's just say hypothetically the warlock had ice block. You can't do anything to it, not even fireballs. But could you Alex him? Could you heal him up? Yeah, I, I don't think you can. He's gonna kill Malganus with a double ice lance, yep. and now that's gonna put him like he's gonna be able to Alex offensively if he wants to, uh, and then maybe Arc Mage Ice Block. But he's gonna be popped by then, so. Yeah, I mean, right now you're just um, you're just always playing catch up against the deck that wins more. So it feels like there is no win condition anymore. I, I would have liked to see the uh, the systematic play that loses to Malganus anyway, but uh, I guess this makes things a bit more interesting, a bit more drawn out. Yeah, this is 15 damage on board. Uh, yeah, it's already, he's already popped. Exhausted, so he pops it. He can have two additional damage sources from the hand. He has Knife Juggler Implosion as well as Doom Guard. So uh, those kinds of things challenge the board inherently. Yeah, and it's also forcing Thais to play the Ice Block no matter what. Like, even if he picks up a Freeze here, he has to play the Ice Block. So he can't go like Archmage, Frost Nova because it's not going to win most of the time at least. Okay, uh, there's no reason to play anything unless he really wants to kill the loot hoarder. Um, 
but I don't really feel like there's a strong need to. Usually you, you can do that if you're afraid of dying to direct damage of some sort, but there's just no possible way. You really don't want to play stuff because if you have seven creatures as a Zulok and you get uh, Frost Novid, you often can't do one damage. Ooh. He's well, going to try it. He's going to try. His best hope to potentially climb back would be if this Flame Strike cleared the board and his opponent had nothing. Mm -hmm. And then you yeah. can outstraza himself, but that's super optimistic. Well, but what about Archmage Antonidas Eyes Block? You kill the Lotheb, and then you Alex yourself. I mean, you're still dead. I know this from it's probably the board. The play, but yeah, it's one of those things where he has to try Flame Strike at least, right? Yeah, like I think he's gonna go for the 0.5 percent chance uh, instead of like the one percent chance. Because if you do that play, the yeah. Ice Block, the Antonidas, you're just never gonna win. Ice Lance. Oh, well, that's cute. You could kill that Doomguard yeah. and freeze the other one. Go for it. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't want to keep his... So he's going to Alex Straza Ice Lance next turn, though. Yeah, he kind of has to. <laughs> well, this game is going on about five minutes longer than we thought, but um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's been great. writing from the wall here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to see the, um, the Doomsayer kill, because if he gets full frozen, the Knife Chuggler has uh, yeah. a much better chance of finishing the game. Do you think um, any of the, the TGT cards stick out to you in terms of like maybe this should go into Freeze Mage? That can help mm -hmm. it against stuff like this, like scenarios like this. Or well, what are the two damage ping? I wonder if it's actually a good fit, just because oh, it, it takes care of so so much of the mid game. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting. Get like a revised list, maybe. Because that card alone is uh, worth playing. What on about Flame Lance? You have to remember giant and <laughs> rag the Yeah, like R Wrathguard Zoo yeah. comes out, you pyroblast him in the face and kill the minion. I bring Playing with that Wrathguard for value. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe everyone's playing Ragnaros. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's not over, actually, just yet. Because he doesn't have lethal right now, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, yeah. And a heal bot so, with a no. ping on the Doom Guard. Oh, okay. No, there is no lethal here. Mm -hmm. It's still not quite completely over. There, there would only would there be lethal with an unlimited board? No. Yes. Yeah, infinite board. You could probably pull it off. Yeah, it would be juggler, uh, imp king boss, implosion, power realm, everything face. Yeah, and everything goes face. You'd have like you need like two more slots, I think. What you do is. Uh... Go ahead. Damn, that's deep. Oh, he's hoping he's killing. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I was that's like, perfect, what if it doesn't perfect work? Perfect result. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I guess. Could have, should have played the M Gang boss first, but in this case, it won't matter. What about a Blizzard here? That'd be Frost crazy. Nova. Right? Frost, Frost Nova. Nova does Frost does give him another Nova. turn. Oh, oh, he actually has the heal bot. Let the that's the card. It's not over. It's not over. He yeah, can, it's he actually not over. Frost Nova here, yeah. Oh man, Frost that'd be nuts. Nova. Oh. Oh, no. Yep, dead on board, even with man, the heal block. If he got, got Antonio's Frost Nova, and then, yeah. like, got, a, got one more way to freeze or something like that, like that would have been, maybe. That would have been game. Well, so it wasn't maybe. quite over for Thais. So, wow. you know, going back over that game, um, mm -hmm. I'd like to know what would have happened if Thais went for the uh, aggressive line of play that we that we spotted sometime on the, I think, turn eight or so before he went for the Alex. I don't know. We'll have to. I'd have to well, look at this again, but right now, Cloud9 is racing ahead. Because of Malganus. I mean, yeah. the, the aggressive line of play directly loses to Malganus because you go all in assuming your opponent can't Can prevent your face damage. Yet. Um, so, I mean, he, he would have lost that way, for sure. Uh, but if, if, if his opponent didn't have exactly Malganus, he would have won that way, for sure. So, it's pretty interesting to uh, see when those calls are made and when they're not. But uh, as far as the overall match is concerned, uh, yeah, yeah Cloud if Strife Throw can do this. it, this is six straight wins yet again after a two-game lead. Oof. Well, I have to assume that Life Coach's Warrior comes out here. And we'll start from there. Uh, at least it's a favored matchup. The difference being that when Tempo Storm was in this position, uh, two of the members were benched. 
So it was yeah. forced into shaman versus the zoo. In this case, Strifeco has Paladin, and there's a couple of matches the Paladin's not very good at. In fact, if it's a mid-range Paladin, there's three matchups that it's not very good against. If it's any Paladin, it's always bad against Grim Patron Warrior, so let's put in Life Coach. Let's put in the... Uh, yeah, put in the face in the hill, yeah. Although, it's starting to change a little bit of opinion. I think it's not Paladin favored, but I think people are climbing... They're putting they're putting higher percentages into this match. They're climbing high on ladder using mid range paladin. Uh, I was talking to Ray now a little bit, and he was saying that he felt like paladin was pretty good against patrons sometimes, um, especially if you put in some weapon hate like Harrison Jones. And he was talking about this with Strifeco. Strifeco was agreeing with him. So if, if Strifeco agrees with him, I'm inclined to I'm like okay, Ray now you know maybe maybe you're onto something. Um, and maybe Shrifeco feels the same exact way, and that's why he's confident in bringing Paladin because it, that's interesting. It could, really, it's starting to get better matchup, and maybe it's yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, it's it's still hard to say. I mean, maybe like, it's like getting better, but it's like forty five, fifty five. Still, I think getting better against Patient is hitting the forty percent mark. Like that. <laughs> that's how getting better against Patient feels these days. Sometimes, yeah. I think we're in a similar situation where. I think the Paladin's probably bad against everything on Nihilum's side of the board, but yeah. it Maybe it still has to lose four times, and that's very unlikely. Right. Let's see. I'll I'll do some math, even if it was unfavor. Let's go ahead and try. This. I think I think it's like uh, on average maybe ten percent unfavored against every single matchup. Okay. So yeah, we're back at the thirteen percent mark for. Yeah, Again, well. in the exact same situation we were earlier, right? So like, yeah. So like if they a near ninety percent chance. Point six times. It's uh, yeah. thirteen percent. Well, all right. Sucks. Thirteen percent. Start with freeze mage. And then he wins against freeze mage of all decks. Oh, heal bot. Yeah, it is a mid range paladin deck. That's not a bad card to have against freeze mage. No, heal bot is really good. Uh, Owl's good. In fact, this. Since just our hands back, good, right? You can toss back Zombie Chow. It's a useless card. You just hope you never draw it. Would you? Because like, you can whittle yeah. away that uh, Ice Barrier and kill the Mad Scientist. Mm. But it, like, if you, you if you don't... Yeah, I guess you're right. But it's one of those things where, like, Zombie Chow, if for some reason it survives, and then, you know, he, for example, the Acolyte in the hand, he, he, it doesn't even challenge it one for one. Yeah. It heals him back. I don't know. It's, I feel like, like I'd rather get Zombie Chow into a Mad Scientist than my Juggler. I think both of you that. guys are actually correct here. Um, <laughs> that can't be Chow, right. Yeah, it, no, it's true, because Zombie Chow is a bad card, but if you apply no pressure to the Freeze Mage, you'll lose 100% of the time. So you have to balance out like sacrificing cards that do nothing just to keep the Mage busy so he yeah. doesn't develop that ideal situation. Like, if, if you have enough pressure and you have heals, you often can beat a Freeze Mage, but if you're too slow to do that, the Freeze Mage just, I mean... With one tick of Emperor, I think you have 34 damage, 32 damage. So you, you, good hand, yeah. yeah, Paladins don't have armor, so if, you, if you're if you slow enough, you're going to lose 100%. That's true, but they also have Lotheb in the deck. We saw it's in the hand now, so that could be... Um, either either you play it before turn 8, or you play it when they're trying to lethal you. Those are the two what windows that you can play Lotheb. That would be very early of a Doomsayer from Tyus if he decides to go for it, to the point where I wouldn't be surprised to see Strive Pro... Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you can't ignore it, right? Because then you lose the board, and then the mage okay. gets the acolyte down, and then you're in a bad spot. Zombie Chow got some value. The uh, reason, the reason I like the Doomsayer is because um, if you see Zombie Chow, you know the deck is probably playing Equality, and mm -hmm. the deck is playing Silence anyway. So I think between Silence and Equality, you can't really reliably expect to keep your Doomsayer. Yeah. You, you try to get as many, I guess, few draws from the Paladin as possible before you start throwing stuff out. So the faster you get the Doomsayer off, the better, I guess. Usually you don't want to Acolyte on uh, turn 3, but because you have so much card draw, um, it's not really that bad if it just dies to a True Silver hit. At least it takes a True Silver hit. Yep, that's right. You still have Arcane Intellect, and then an Acolyte can draw two cards guaranteed by pinging it. The Doomsayer acts as like a buffer for all those knife hits, which is funny to me. But kind of amusing that like sometimes we say Doomsayer sounds is useless, but the Boom Boss can very often tank the hit. No, mm. oh, it's pretty clutch against Doctor Boom, Ragnaros. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the knife troubles. All right. I would 
assume that it's a true silver attack because if this is the yeah. only card draw mechanism of Freeze Mage, you can shut it down mm -hmm. very effectively. Hey, that's all they've I got. You can probably win from there. I, I don't. I, I guess it's because Knife Juggler gets less effective as the Mana Crystals go up, so this is also an opportunity for Strife Crow to... You, you, you make a great point yeah. because once, once you get the Blizzard turn, that's oh. basically game, and that juggle is godlike. What on earth? <laughs> Headshot. Yeah, that's crazy. He needed exactly that juggle. Shadow's practicing for Overwatch, man. Getting his. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That game what, is. What have you been doing, Noctis? Yeah. <laughs> I've been hacking into the beta. Oh wait. Hacking into the beta. It's it's so annoying. They put it into the launcher too. I know. Mm. I, I yeah. Crip was talking to me about this last time. He logged on. He's like, like so oh, Overwatch is here. <laughs> I, I knew those Blizzard people. connections would pay off one day. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, never mind that. No. Nope. Well, uh, that's actually a lot of pressure coming out. I like that play from Strife Grow. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's a great play. It's it's so tempting because you have two Choose Over Champions in the hands. Like, well, I got to get this out eventually, right? Mm -hmm. 16 damage. Um, but he goes for a normally counterintuitive play, and now these jugglers get some time. So time. would you see just playing dudes non-stop in order not to waste anything? Oh. Face well. face. Okay. But the thing is with, like, that there is some uh, repercussions from, from playing this um, this Blood Mage. I mean, if you're Strife Crow and you see that, you know you cannot die from full HP anymore. Yeah. Right. There's no OTK left, even if with like two Emperor Tricks. You're, you're going to take a whole lot of damage, but unless Archmage comes in and feeds the Actually, Mage to the Fireball. With two Emperor Ticks, there is still OTK. Because you could create five Fireballs with... Yeah, with infinite Mage. Archmage, yeah. But with, with one uh, Emperor Tick, there is no way to do 30 damage anymore. I think Shrivekrow also calculated the fact that Assuming his opponent can't deal with with the knife jugglers, he can low theb and deny a, a blizzard. So he has three turns, and that's 18 damage with knife jugglers at least. And that's not even counting the what's it called uh, the, the juggles itself. The juggles, yeah, the knives that go out. So I I might I'd, I mean you could go for a quartermaster here, which is a conventional play, but I feel like. If there's a time for Strive Crow to just be like, okay, this is the line that I took, it, dropping Lothep here would make sense to me mm. based off of the way he's been trying to use yeah. his knife jugglers to get a lot of mileage. I like uh, I like that thought. You have to so, kill the Acolyte first, though, because otherwise yeah. the mage gets card draw from I the juggles. You, you can even consider killing the Mad Scientist, but um, it's all right, I guess. You have to keep in mind, like, if you get only one juggle into the Mad Scientist, I don't think you'd actually use your 1-1 anyway, because you want to save it for the Quartermaster. Now the question, do I lose the Zombie Chow to the 2-2, two -two, or do I lose my Juggler to the Ping instead of the Zombie Chow? I think either way, you might as well just kill it now, I think and he, keep your second Juggler. Because yeah. you're going to heal him up anyway. Right. It's still 2 damage, though. Yeah. You can't Ping you, True Silver is like, what, 16 <clears throat> damage total between those two charges? That doesn't account for Consex. Whoa. Fireball. If children watching, damage. not just be careful. Sorry, what? Ch oh, oh, sorry. I wasn't <clears throat> talking about prisoners. What? So he has to kill off these knife jugglers for sure. There's actually just so many targets he wants to kill off. To um, ah! That Lothab complicates things. The secrets coming out here is pretty huge. Ice That's barrier a good one. is very nice. That's probably um, better than block. He has a second ice barrier in hand, so the scientist will guarantee the second scientist will guarantee ice block, which I think he has to push out and he can kill off the second What to do? What to do? That might be the key to be able to turn this game around. Yeah, and I think he's got the tools that he needs to do just that, honestly. Um, like Lothab was a good tempo tool, but But at the same time. If you think about it, every barrier is worth the same as a true silver champion. So yeah. we can just kind of count down as many. So basically, the limitation is how many times this Lothab can attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's the big source of damage. This Shredder is also That's pretty a nice sweet. Card. That's a nice card to find. 
It lets you uh, play a dude as well, which is very nice. Eventually, oh. the dudes will will take away know, the world. union up and rile up. <laughs> union up. They'll grow arms, is what you're yeah. saying. They'll hit the gym. Lawyer up. <laughs> Quartermaster. Well, uh, you know, Zombie Chow again in a position where it could easily pick off the scientists, make a flame strike not as high value. Um, Let me I mean, I think it's okay that might that. be a good play. Yeah. Think about how much value the Zombie Chow has gotten. Yeah, it's, it's like five men of Pyroblast minus five. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, it, it restored five health too. So mm -hmm, exactly. Exactly. It was like a fire. It was like a fireball, really. It was it, like it a star the ball here too. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, good point. Alright. The unspoken hero. The unsung hero of the game was the zombie chow from Turn oh, 1. Oh, Kalento just got a Gromash health screen. That's crazy. Oh, nice. Yeah, Congrats. I saw that. Where did he get the pack? He's opening packs from... Yeah. Maybe he missed... Oh, wait, wait, wait. What he's doing is he played Tavern Brawl to test the new cards. But there's no packs yeah. this week, right? He got the pack. No, you get a pack. Oh, do you? I didn't get one. I wonder. Oh. Uh, did well, I? Blizzard only gives packs to people they like. So. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Noxious. No, that's fine. <laughs> I didn't get the little invitation for the you know, little horn thing that they sent to everyone. It's fine. All right. Well, um, I think this game is moving at such a slow pace. You might even be able to save your Emperor. Or, yeah, I guess he is not willing to do just that. There's a lot of damage, though, coming up from, uh, from Strike Pro, so... Ooh, okay. That is not a good card, actually. Uh, if you had that Doomsayer. There, yeah, if the second Doomsayer is strong. Well, it's funny is that there's a second. silence to Doomsayer, so there's always which, a chance of stealing. Which is actually things. good for Strife, bro. <laughs> right. Uh, hmm. You can always fireball your silence Doomsayer, play Doomsayer, then fireball Sylvanas. Oh, man, the plays. Or throws. Or throws, yeah, I was going to say, it depends how you look at it, really. <laughs> this is a great quarter master turn, honestly. Like, it's not going to get better. Yeah. Oof. And you want to you wanna dunk the 3-3s three because those easily die to flame strike while the low table will uh, clock in 5 damage. Whatever comes out of the shredder will clock in. Well, maybe Six, not. 6, because it's Apomatic, right? Or Pagel. That's fine, you can draw into those, you know, Avenging Wrath. Or Lore Walker yeah. Joe. They can load up on those frost novas. Oh yes. Get all the the burn. Get Keep all the burn. Air. Keep that doomsayer in place, man. Mm. Well, I guess just draw first, because you're gonna be blizzarding, right? This is a, it, it yeah, looks like a pretty a, easy matchup from Dice's perspective. Because even I though think, he looks like he's under pressure, he's you know super well off right now. I think there's some reason to just uh frost nova here. Yeah, you can Ice Barrier on the back of it if you want. Yeah, yeah, you can Frost Nova Ice Barrier. I like Blizzard being dumped because it's more expensive. Frost Nova gives you more flexibility. Uh, for example, you can even Blizzard and then next turn ping the Shredder. So that way the Frost yeah. Nova is also effective and you can clear off with another Flame Strike. I, uh, it I, I agree with you in, in the general sense, but I think when you have two Frost Novas... You're certainly like gonna favor just playing one of them. Sure, sure. Like if you had Blizzard versus Frost Nova, I think you're right. But if you had Blizzard versus two Frost Novas, you just want to play more stuff and have Blizzard uh, effectively do damage. Yep, that's a good point. I wonder. Okay, now well, it's, uh... consecration is sort of helpful as uh, you you de generally want to have direct damage from the hand if you're gonna be popping the ice block. But he's it's not a lot, coming. maybe right now. He uh, he needs to put his opponent in range at least for it to be useful. Uh, the zombie chow is never getting played. Well, never say never, but I would definitely lean towards very never. seldom. Yeah, very very seldom. You're right. I learned that from Justin Bieber, right? Uh, is that a new song that came out? Recently? A new song? Oh my god! It's like the oldest song, I think. Listen, you, you keep your Canadian music. Of course, of right course. From that, that, my that's pure American ears. Yeah. <laughs> God. 
He's Canadian. ETLC is an American based uh, company. I didn't even know Justin Bieber was Canadian. Oh my keep God. Your, keep your national treasures away from us. National right, treasures. No one, no one <laughs> Let's do you this. Anymore. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I've been disgraced. Yeah, that's right. We all know what's in the bottom of that shelf a whole collection of seeds. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm secretly a, very a fan of Bieber. Purposeful camera angles. Please don't. Don't go there. Can you just burn him? I don't think so. Uh, there's not enough damage, you know. I was looking at uh, the, that exact scenario. You could kill him. The thing is, if he heals just a little bit with the true silvers, then you're kind of out of well, it. Well, what, what would you do? You would do Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Double Fireball, which is uh, 15 plus 4. It's 19. And then next turn, you can Pyroblast. It's yeah, not good know. enough. Yeah, and he has true silver heals. No, you won't, because you'd be frozen. Oh, you'd, oh, yeah, you'd freeze first, and then you'd die, but you're right, you're right, you're right. Crip with the clutch calls. I guess you could go Blizzard Ping, and then next turn you go for that play. If he has a lay on hands, then you've wasted your entire game. What if you ping your own Doomsayer here? The place? No. Okay, so what is the reasoning behind that? You know he has Sylvanas, and you know okay. he'll drop Doomsayer. Oh, that's a great card for Strive Crow. If anything ever becomes dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> What if there's a Doomsayer in that Shredder? Ooh. That changes that changes the game entirely. It does. Let me what could he be looking? What could help Strive Crow from that uh, that Shredder? Like a really big um, help, you know? Think Leopardome style. Okay. Yeah, Armor Smith is quite nice. Armor <laughs> Smith is actually really sick. This game's like four or five. Years. Well, Sylvanas is coming down. Yeah. yeah, no reason not to, I guess, at this point. Since if you lose your board, then so be it. But Yeah. Oh, that's a decent, to say the least, top deck. Do you it just Frost Nova ping, though? You kind of have to, right? You, you ping the Shredder, then you Nova. Yes, I, I believe you do that. Plus, if you get a Doomsayer, you're, uh, you're going to jump out of your seat. Ice going to need a new chair after that one. <laughs> I'd like to see it happen though. It's happened twice so far in the ATLC. Mm. One where the patron lost his entire board. So that was that was a pretty good sight. Yeah, I'd like to see that as well. I, I'm not sure if it's that desperate, but I, I think it's a really solid... I think it's actually the play anyway. And if, if Doomsday yeah, comes out, solid. then you're happy. So It could and also be actually... like a sheep. If you get a sheep, you can just play him straight. Yeah, or even Unstable Ghoul, I was going to say. Like, those two are pretty well. Troll. Mad science. No, that's an undead. Mm. The thing is, you you kind of do want a flame strike here. Yeah, and the reason much. is, it's just too clunky. Otherwise. So you just freeze Sylvanas to prevent the damage in, like, yeah. intake? Yeah, yeah enough damage to finish the one game health if you draw Sylvanas out, like, is a real liability. <laughs> I was gonna say RB Cowl would actually pop the block. That'd be crazy. You use one owl. Um, yeah, already. The second one. I think if. I think this might be the last turn Ice can draw Alex Ross and have a chance to win. Or even Archmage, right? Actually, Ar yeah, Archmage Frost, no. No, because he pops the ice block still, right? Mm, yeah, with the weapon, you're right. Well, then you just play, you replay Ice Block. Mm, right? Okay, well, we got to find so out. So he, he pops the block, and then you play Ice Block with, like, double fireball to his face that costs four, and then you go double yeah, fireball. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, Frostbolt. Okay. It's I all about... Is, I think this is a winning situation, actually. I think Tice uh, probably has this game. Then again, that heal bot, man, that heal bot. That heal bot's big. Yeah, heal bot seems... Feels like it'd be pretty sweet. Oh, the that could be also big, big too. Yeah, that stops damage. Um, Good then enough. You're not, you're not going to have Antonitis next turn. So wait, do you kill the Doomsayer to force him to give you the Archmage? <laughs> In case he decides to clear? Nah, you just go play this block. Oh, sure. uh, okay. I, it's it. You only do that if uh, there's no, no other play and you had guaranteed damage, but... He needs to like force him to have the second ice block. Mm -hmm. No, obviously it's it's a silly play. Ooh, Damn. that's ramping up pretty fast. 
So there's enough damage to win the game for sure. It's just does he have time now? You know what the best thing is? If if he got a Doomsayer, the best play would have been to fireball his own Antonitis and then ping off Sylvanas. And then yeah. You're right to actually give him the Doomsayer. So two fireballs is uh, 12, 15 damage this turn. Next turn he has another 15. But then the, the heal bot. Yeah. yeah. The heal bot limitation. Well, you could always find... What could you find? Doomsayer. That shredder could... Yeah. Doomsayer. He has, he has no weapons left, so if the shredder ends up being terrible, then it's okay. Oh! Why don't you Peacekeeper the Doomsayer and kill it And with then Sylvanas. kill it with Sylvanas. Wow. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say. That's sick. That's yeah, that's a play. great. Because yeah. the, the, one of the only ways you lose this game, you know there's another Doomsayer left. One of the only ways you lose is if you get your board like fully cleared by uh, a Doomsayer ping. That is actually the best play, but that is so hard to see. Because it's no, not I found it in one all. second. It's the one time buffing the attack of a minion of the Peacekeeper is the perfect play. <laughs> <laughs> well, first we want to pop the ice block, right? That's the priority. And then you have to drop heal, Bob. Yep. I think oh, he's going to he do it, man. It. He has to be he's seeing it. He has to be seeing it. Do 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 it. No! 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 Oh, it's still he a good play, right? Well, he stole what? the Silence Doomsayer. I wonder if he, if he realizes that he could still. I don't think it matters for him because ultimately he's still. No, it, it actually doesn't matter. The outcome is still the same, but. Yeah. Uh, wait, is it? Has he lost if he just uses removal on these minions? A Frost now Bolt on something. Now it's Prey, it's a Doomsayer time, right? Is it? Oh, man. That wait, could be on. so insane. Uh, three, five. No, wait. Healbot is... Healbot ping Frostbolt. Is it's that enough. What that's? No, it's not. It's one over. No, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's still dead. Healbot so ping Frostbolt is still dead. Yeah. Um, so, well... Doomsayer, boys? Yeah. I guess you have no choice. What else are you going to do? Yeah, you have no choice. But if there is a Doomsayer, Tice is probably going to win. On the yeah, flip side. No, probably. <laughs> on the upside, I guess uh, that's happening. So Ty Tice has a... One point like, a, a sheep could work chance. too, right? Yeah, a sheep, a sheep, sheep could work too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's sheep or doomsayer. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh man, I I, I saw a mech. Yeah, and I, I saw, saw something uh, glow. I kind of like I thought it was a sign telling yeah. me. Well, all right, guys. Well, today we just wit witnessed uh, one team get a lead, uh, two points on the board, and then have the other team sweep them six wins in a row. Twice. Yeah. Twice. Oh, Sniper's happy. <laughs> I won uh, the most impossible matchup ever. This is good. That's I think Sniper may have Frodan outplayed Strife Grow. Can we get a That's recognition right. here? Can we give this man a trophy? <laughs> uh, yeah, can we give this caster a non sapping token so he's never sapped <laughs> ever again? Uh, that's right. That's my reward. Yeah. Get, get out of sap free card. There yeah. <laughs> So enough, you're gonna get mulched. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. That All right. It. The way Cloud Nine has won also puts them in second place decisively, and Nine Eleven Tempest Storm guaranteed at least top five. Uh, we have one more match that'll be rather meaningful. It'll be Archon and the Force and Boys determining who is going to take that spot, and more importantly, who is going to be dropping to sixth, uh, because yep. sixth will have to play one more match against 7th, and that just makes your road that much more difficult. Yeah. It's going to be the uh, Redemption, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and there's going to be a satellite afterwards to get to the, the Grand Finals, possibly. Oh, apparently Value Town is confirmed being first in Phase 1, so apparently they will be going uh, onwards to the next, uh, the next phase. That means they will be joining Cloud9 uh, in the live finale. So all of the fans of Cloud9 and Value Town rejoice. They'll be going to Texas I think that's uh, a pretty cool opportunity to for guys like Calento to once again make a trip to the U.S., but also ECOP. I haven't actually seen ECOP in a U.S.-based competition, uh, so that'll be an awesome opportunity. For really? That's interesting. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, and Should this also means that uh, we're done for the day. We have two matches 
again tomorrow. Uh, so make sure you guys check everything out at teamarchon.com. You can go to the league section there. Uh, do you guys do you have any final words before we wrap up the day here? I mean, my final words were said. I'm I I couldn't be happier. We we saw we saw two teams have their souls absolutely crushed in the most devastating way in a six consecutive way six consecutive win sweep. Um, well, it sucks to be that team, but um, I think for entertainment value, um, it's pretty yeah, high. Today. The, the ATLC has delivered. So <laughs> yeah, I'm still waiting on Celestial to, to win a match tomorrow. Like that, that's my hope. Like th that's what I'm rooting for. I want Celestial to just give somebody a, a loss on the record, just because. Right? They can somebody play the spoiler. Is Archon. Yeah? yeah, Team Archon will be playing them uh, in the final week. So, they can maybe. shut down Archon pretty hard, and if yeah. Liquid also shuts down Force and Boys, they also jump into the discussion of being able to go into fifth place. So mm -hmm. there's still a lot of possibilities depending on uh, how the series ends up panning out. That's why you guys want to tune in tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific here on uh, Maz's channel. Uh, before we go, we'll also give one final shout out to our sponsors. So big thank you to Alpha Draft. If you want to go ahead and play some fantasy ATLC, just head on over to alphadraft.com and sign up. Uh, there's lots of cash being given away. And again, you're just watching Hearthstone, so why not make some money? Also, big shout out to Amazon App Store. We're giving away 50% off for 40 pack giveaways. It's going to be extremely relevant coming up in the next few days, considering that TGT is on the verge of being released. It's coming out August 24th, which again, here on the ATLC, we'll be playing the patch live with all the cards being relevant. It's going to be a fun time. Thanks so much for yeah, watching. From crazy Man, Noxious. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.